This is right here on the map. There's supposed to be a town here called Melberg. This is a town? Too small for a ranch, too draggle-tailed for a cemetery. Must be a town. interested in the job, would you? Me? Yeah, I'm trying to fill out a trail crew. In about four or five hands. Dollar a day, all you can eat. I ain't interested. Why not? Well, I ain't hungry. Can't argue with that. Now, mister, you know better than to make an offer like that to a little skinny fella. How about you? You a big eater? Well, I didn't get this running foot races. Any trail driving? I've been on most of them. Good. What's the name? Gus Marsden, what's yours? Your favor is Clay Forrester. Job's yours if you want it. You got yourself a hand. Uh, if you'll help me out here first. Oh. You both know how to write. Yeah? We got a couple that want to get married. They need uh, witnesses. <laughs> well, there's nothing I like better than somebody else's wedding. I netted you a couple of fish. You boy, American citizen? Uh, yeah. Sign the book. Uh, neat and straight. Yes, sir. Your turn. Mm -hmm. Can you hurry this up? Traver and Forrester. Oh, I want you to meet Amy Gold and Frank Loudon. Hey, thank you for helping us. Oh, it's my pleasure, man. Just say the words. Ooh, when I'm ready, boy, when I'm ready. This is supposed to be a solemn moment. Well, it's solemn in our hearts. Isn't that where it counts? Sure is, honey. Sure is. Might be I got a fast-talking version. Please. Uh, you come over and stand over there. This is my marrying coat. Now, uh, hold them hands together. <clears throat> now, folks, we stand here in the sight of God, me and these here cowboys, to join this boy and this girl in the state of matrimony. Now, if there's anyone here of a mind to object, I want to know right now, otherwise it's going to be too late. All right. Now, uh, who gives this here child to be married to this man? Oh, uh... Uh, yeah, I, I do. And do uh, you, Amy, take this man, Frank? Oh, name Loudon in there? Yeah. A girl with him? I hear now pronounce you man and wife. What's the matter with you, Amy? You're gone crazy. Now, you hold on here. Carl, I told you and Pa I was getting married. Now, this is my choice, and you can't undo it. Married to this? <laughs> You're going home. Take your hands off my wife. Or what? I said, take your hands off my wife. Watch it, child! It's uh, no use, man. Oh, God. <laughs> Who was he? A brother. You two better get going. Here comes some more of them. Amy. Amy, I'm sorry. I guess I'd best go on alone now. No. No, you're my family now. This, this couldn't be helped.
Are they married? Fair. Karen, bring them back. Sure thing, Mr. Galt. That's my son's horse. Where is he? Well, Odden just murdered your son, Mr. Galt, in there. Murdered Carl? Murdered be the wrong word, mister. It was a fair fight. They ain't far ahead, Mr. Galt. You'll get them. You better. It's you or him now. You sure know the worst ways of breaking bad news, don't you, friend? There's no sense mincing around it. What's your stake in this business, Marcy? No stake. Well, uh, you sure helped provoke that fight when you yelled. How come? Well, later drawed sooner or later. You just wanted to make sure it was sooner, huh? Now, you saw what happened. They'd done it. I didn't cause it. But you didn't do anything to stop it. Why should I? Well, Loudon's your friend. I never saw him before. I was just passing by, like you. Well, how come you knew he was the girl's father when he rode in? <laughs> Everybody around here knows Tom Galt. You better get to know him yourself. You'll be driving your herd across his land all the way to Squaw River. Squaw River? How many acres this man got? He claims 100,000. But so does Loudon, his new son-in-law. The same hundred thousand? That's the fight. Loudon showed up around here about eight months ago. Saw all this land, started bringing in his kinfolk. Staking out claims. There were a couple of killings. Now Loudon's got Galt's girl in the land. Nobody knows who's right anymore. Nobody cares. The man who first settles the land is the man who owns it. Nobody can legally settle a hundred thousand acres. It's like nobody's got the right to say who a man can't or can't marry. Is that your feeling, Mr. Favor? Man ought to respect the law. Well, since when did you respect anything you knew was wrong? Well, if it's wrong, you can get it settled in court. What are we talking about anyway? Don't know the facts. Besides, it's got a herd to move. Now, that's a fight you won, boy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a man's got to stand up and be counted. You can come in or not. Boy's a troublemaker, Mr. Favor. You can have enough on your back without him snapping at you. War comes, Galt and Loudon both will be after you heard. Maybe there won't be no war. Maybe you can blow out the sun with one puff. With any kind of luck, we can make Squaw River in two days. Mr. Favor, you're dreaming if you think you can outrun war. Beef, you know, not a herd of turtles. You didn't say the pressure, Mr. Paper. Well, I'm saying it now. I want to be across the squaw in two days' time. Squaw's near 20 miles north. Don't care if it's 200. You prod some life into that lead steer. Right. Wince, this is Gus Marsden. Check him out on drag. Yeah. Look at him. I've seen molasses run faster in snow time. How long for Raleigh will be back with those new men? Not in time to do us any good. Probably a week. Well, without more help, it'll take us four days to get to the river. We'll make it. Found a body up ahead. Looks like a bushwhacking. Get a wishbone, yeah. What hit it? Mark on him, but he's dead. You, say, you know him, Mr. Faber? I know he was. His boss tried to break up a brand new marriage. He was wrong. Well, let's speed him in.
us a favor. Well, uncover him, quick! Easy, easy. Easy. Easy now. Get it off the field. Grab it. Pull his arm. You were dead. Lizzie, doesn't look like it now. Get some water. You said you checked him. I did! No heartbeat, no pulse, no breath, no nothing! No, it's not his fault. Take it easy, take it easy. I ought to carry around a letter or something. It has happened to me before. It's some kind of a trance I go into. Even the doctors don't know why or how. You're one of Galt's men. Ben Karen. Evan, honey, you stay down. No, no, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> Look, an apology would hardly be right if there's anything we can do. Oh, I forget it. The only thing is, uh, I don't look forward to reporting this to Mr. Galt. You don't take too kindly to failure. Now, of course, I've been meaning to quit him. Have you ever worked a trail drive? More than once. To tell you the truth, you'd be helping us out if you joined up with us. Oh, no. I'd be much obliged to you, Mr. Gil Favor. Mr. Favor. Dollar a day and your meals. Much obliged. How you feel? Fine. Well, let's go. He was dead. Here's a squaw. Well, keep it at that pace we hit today. We'll make it by that river by sundown tomorrow. Keep it up. Hey, Afternoon. Afternoon. I'm still looking for my daughter. Have you seen her? And that's his town. You know, it's funny how quick she disappeared. Like the ground swallowed her. A ground or a trail drive. Uh, uh Now, you wouldn't mind us searching your camp, would you, Mr. Favor? Yeah, I would. Well, don't. I got no cause to hurt you or your men. But I'm gonna get my daughter back. Look, she's not here, Mr. Gold. Now, if you can't see that for yourself from where you are, I'm sorry, but that's all the further you come. Karen, what the devil happened to you? I lost her, Mr. Galt. Figured I'd best not go back. Healthier all around that way. You're working for him now. For the time being. Do you object to that, Mr. Galt? Mr. Galt, why don't I take some of them in and search those wagons? Why don't you just bring them right on in, boy? If you happen to run across my daughter, I'd appreciate hearing about it. Everybody in these parts knows where my ranch is. Some mighty fine looking cattle you got. They'll do. I was thinking the same thing. Adios, Mr. Favor. Now it starts. You afraid, boy? All right, break it up. The only thing starting is this herd. Let's get moving. Move them out. Where? The land between here and the squaw is anybody's territory. War comes, we'll be caught right in the middle. How far west we have to go to be clear of it? Oh, 50 miles west, 25 north, 50 back. It'll take us forever. What's the choice? Gold will be raising an army now, Loudon too. An army needs beef. I'm gonna stand here and have my herd slaughtered out from under me. What about a way west? 
Well, the main problem is water. The map doesn't show any holes west of here. There is a town up the line of ways. I could ride in and see if they've spotted any wells. All right, I'll go with you. Quince, turn the herd west and keep moving. You know this fellow Martin claims we're a bunch of fools. He says no matter how hard we press this herd, we're going to wind up in the big fat middle of this fight. Well, it ain't our war, so we're going to do everything we can to stay out of it. I don't care what Marsden thinks or wants. Well, Karen seems to agree with him. You know, for a couple of boys I've never met before, they seem to be an awfully friendly pair. I'd better break them up. Put Marsden on right flank, Karen on left. Won't work. Why not? Well, the way those two work cattle, they make the steers nervous. They bunch them, crowd them too much. They're best on drag. Now you worry about the steers. I'll worry about the men. Split them. I'll do that. What hit it? Hit it in Boot Hill at midnight. Well, there's another place I know of called Calvin. What was that? See what I see? I do the man. Help. See if you can dig up some whiskey. Hey, there's another one. Hey. Come on. Yeah, I'll try that. Huh, that's what. Hold it. Come on. Come on. My friend, he's alive, huh? Yeah. How long you been here? No, say, three weeks, maybe more. I heard you outside. I want to yell. Food. Food. I'll get you some jerky from my saddlebag. Feeling better? Si, mil gracias. You come along just in time. Get that right, hombre. Hey. That's the only name these guys, hombre. Nice Miller White. Your favor? Clay Forster. What brought you here? Luck? No, oh, no. We were looking for information. And water. Water. Last well dried up more than a month ago. No water. No animals. No crops. No hay nada. Just when we were all ready to leave, anyhow. Plague hit. That finished it. How's things west of here? Worse. North? Well, you'd probably be all right northeast, especially across the squaw. It's funny how we always get back to that squaw. Well, you can take my word for it. There ain't any grazing west or straight north. You said we needed grazing? You said you were trail drillers. No, we didn't. No, ah, you look like drovers. Either you said it or I guessed it. What's it matter? Do you have any more beef? Mm, plenty. Back at the check wagon. You would take us with you, huh? We would work hard. All we need is uh, water and food and the loan of a horse until we cross the river. <coughs> well, you'll get the regular play all the hands get. Dollar a day and grub. Mil gracias, senor. Those two can pull their own weight. Call them out and decide they need beef. We're sitting ducks. Yeah? Well, we did the best we could to stay out of this fight. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. That's what Marson said. Hmm. You can't outrun war.
back already? We've had five plates already. Uh, he says he likes your cooking. But if you have no more... Hold on. Give me that. Mr. Favor sure isn't saving any money on you. Gracias, cocinero. I suppose you'd like some more? Uh, well, it, it was very good in your wishbone, but... Uh, but you're already full. Uh, yes. I'm glad somebody is. Andale, Cocina bien, eh? So I come out here for my health, but it didn't do no good. <coughs> What's it like, Mr. White? When I cough, it's like a brand and iron across my chest. <coughs> Funny, I've been feeling a little tight in my chest lately. It's the night air. Well, this is supposed to be the cleanest air on Earth. This air clean? Where do you see my part of the country? Well, where's that, Mr. Karen? Long way off, Mushy. Takes some men a whole lifetime to get there. I probably never will make it. Sure you will. We'll go with you. Just let me know when you're ready. I'm taking myself. <coughs> the squirrel dip's down here and runs north and south for a ways. I figure that's where we ought to make the crossing, right there at the dip. How far away are we? Well, less than a mile. We ought to be across by 9, 9.30 tomorrow. <laughs> you boys never quit, do you? You're fools if you think Galt will let your herd get by him now. Well, he hasn't stopped us so far. He hasn't needed the meat so far. You seem awful certain of yourself, Karen. There are some things you can't change, Mr. Favor. What? Death, the stars? By me, a man makes his own fate. Sure. Now, the unchangeable I was referring to is human nature. Mr. Favor! We got a guest. Um, I saw you campfire. I figured I'd better check. How are you, Mr. Favor? Fine. Take it easy. He don't work for gold no more. I wonder why you stopped following us that day. Must have hit a tree limb coming down that draw. Knocked me out. You show a lot of sand, Mr. Loudon. Gold's ranch ain't far from here. Well, if you're going to hit a man, you better be close enough to do some damage. At least that's what my pappy-in-law taught me. You got your ranch? Every building. Burned to the ground. He had us outnumbered, so we took to the hills, about ten of us. Been here ever since. You mean here? You and your wife? Right under Gull's nose? Right under his nose. I said word to Loudon's as far north as Dakota. There's more than a hundred of them riding down. We don't figure to be outnumbered and running anymore. That's why I dropped in on you, Mr. Favor. Give you a chance to get out. By sunup tomorrow, you better have your herd turn south. Can't do it. Well, this will be battleground. By tomorrow night, your steers will be scattered over a thousand acres, ready to be picked up by anybody who wants them. And there's no water and no grass south of here. So we can't go back. I'm sorry. I hoped I could help. The way you and Forrester helped me and Amy when we needed it. I guess all I can do now is wish you good luck. He's right. I never pick up more than a quarter of the herd. We I mean, don't seem like a bad fellow either. Boy, it's a pity he won't listen to reason. Maybe nobody's ever tried to talk reason to him. Where are you going? After Loudon? Try and talk reason to him. How many men you've got, you still can't win. Will you listen to me? I've been listening, Mr. Favor, and I don't like what I hear. Nobody wins wars, you know that. You've got to stop this while there's still time. It's too late to stop it. And you want to see it happen? 
I want what my husband wants for me. What? Hiding out like this? Never a home? Never a minute's rest? Just don't think this'll be just one quick move and then over and done with. It'll go on for 20 years. Now, you can't wipe each other out in one blow, you know that. You'll hit and scatter and hit and scatter over and over until there's just one Galt or one Loudon left alive. Is that what you want for your wife? All I'm asking you to do is to talk to him. Frank, maybe you could... Go to bed, Amy. There'll be a lot of work to do in the morning. Good night, Mr. Faber. Good night. You could have said all this back at the camp. Why come here with it? Want to say it in front of her? I make the decisions. I expect you to make the right decisions. Let me just try and set up a meeting. If it doesn't work, it'll be on Galt's head. Everybody will know you tried. More important, she'll know it. I was born on the frontier, Mr. Favor. I never had a nickel to my name. My old lady was a gambling shill. My pa was a horse thief. Men like Tom Galt kicked me back in the mud every time I lifted my head. So I kept lifting it again and remembering the kicks and waiting. I won't give in to Tom Galt. If you can set it up, I'll talk to him. Good. I'll get over there tonight. It's Karen. Lon, it's Galt. You got past your lookout. What are you doing here? I'll follow you. Why? I figured I might be needed. You were alone. And I saw Galt and about 30 of his men cross your trail. Frank, what is it? It's your pa. This is the way he wants to talk. Really, it, friends. Drop your gun belts. Pa, you can't. You're coming home, girl, where you belong. Anybody try to follow us? <laughs> Tried to push him out of the way. Bad? Bad enough. Go, took the girl. When have you got a doctor? Hey, how come Galt was out at all? How do you know where to look? War don't need eyes, Mr. Faber. They're gone. Come on. You can take care of them. If you don't mind, I believe I'll stand watch over Loudon for a while. I feel some responsible. Hombre. They broke it out just as soon as you left. Then the arguing started, the taking sides, Gold or Loudon. Get him over here right now. Can't. They lit out. Hi, Mr. Figger. What is him? I did. Idiot came to me with a bottle and said, Mr. Wishbone, do you mind if I take a little nip? Well, I gave him a clout across the chops. He'll remember the rest of his days. How'd you make out with Loudon? Didn't. Then we can't move? Oh, yeah. We can move all right, all right. What's the worst hangover cure you ever come across? Pepper, red chili, mustard, cactus juice, raw eggs. Good, good. Slip in a mite of gunpowder, too. You have a couple of quarts ready for morning? 
Well, I can, but you don't expect to have any of these idiots working by tomorrow, do you? Oh, I expect to have every last steer across the squaw by mid-morning. Can't be done. It has to be done. Maybe I can't stop this war, but at least I don't have to be caught in the middle, not with safety a mile away. Where are you going now? I'll check tonight. There is somebody out there, ain't there? Well, Casey and Gethy. Well, a couple of good men. A couple of teetotalers. Yeah. that river and nobody man the devil is gonna stop us my daughter wants to talk to you mr favor i told her this is no place for a woman but she's stubborn is frank dead don't know ma'am after you cross you'll probably see some of frank's people probable well i'd appreciate it if you would ask them where he is and then send a man back here to tell me because if frank is dead then i don't care to live either and i won't now that's a silly childish thing to say will you send me a message mr favor I'll do that, ma'am. Thank you. Ah, she's trying to bluff me into letting her go. She's got more threats than tears, and none of it means a thing. Still, if you've got anybody in your crew that knows about medicine, and if you run into Loudon... Loudon's people will be here any minute. My first job is to get this herd across the river. After that, I'll do everything I can. Is that Loudon? Let's move. Karen, give me a hand. Thanks for sticking with me. Don't you fret yourself, Mr. Loudon. I'll be close by from now on. There's Mr. Galt. And your wife, Mr. Loudon. We just don't have enough men to stop Favor now if he wants to cross. I told you not to fret yourself, Mr. Loudon. <laughs> they won't cross.
Let it smell death across that river, in your favor. Yeah, sure. Death and pestilence, war and famine. Don't be foolish, Jesus. Ah, hello! is Mrs. Loudon. Oh, you're finally getting that through your head, huh? Finally. Well, nothing stopped her, horse. Maybe nothing could. Not even this. Just kept his head down. Well, what's that mean? Well, it was the sun that stopped the cows. They couldn't see the other bank. By noon, they'll go across like babies. Yeah, if there's anybody left to push them. Frank! 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 Kind of a shame we can't do it like they did in the old storybooks. When they'd send a fellow out from each side, and a fellow one way, he'd win everything. It's also kind of a shame the young smart Alex won't keep their mouths shut when their betters are talking. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You still dead set on a big war? Well, he'd never go for an idea like that. I'm asking if you'd go for it. I'd think about it if he would. Wish you got a fair-sized piece of white cloth? I got an old white shirt. Dig it out, I'm going across the river. A favor. Want to talk to Loudon? Can't talk. Him and his kinfolk had a powwow. They elected me general. You can say your say right here. Well, what's your proposition? Not a proposition. A challenge. A what? Fight to the finish. One man from each side. No holds barred. Winner take all. No. Well, now that's an interesting idea. Why not? To Loudon's advantage, we've got him outnumbered. Then why don't you just start shooting? Maybe I'm getting tired of killing. Well? What's your stake, senor? You heard? Every last deer. And 100,000 acres? And 100,000 acres. Now, how can you decide a fight with just two men? Who's your challenger? Marsden? Well, now, that all depends on who you boys send out. I made the challenge. You, Mr. Faber? Well, in that case, I think I'd like the honor. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Faber. It's my land. It's my responsibility. It's my herd. Right here, high noon? High noon. Your side of the river. I just can't figure why Mr. White left the herd. What's funny about that? He's a mercenary. I think those other three, that's where they hang around together. 
Well, what's a mercenary? Oh, it's a soldier who will work for anyone as long as they pay him enough. Well, saddle tramps are trying to squeeze every last dime out. That's why they keep switching sides. Well, they're not cow hands. They're not enough money in it. Well, what's a mercenary? I told you, a saddle tramp. A cow bum who'll look around for any kind of trouble that he can make a fast buck out of. Yeah, and they even make trouble among themselves when things get slow. Change your mind any about the rules? Nope. Ready when you are, Mr. Faber. Don't you know yet you can't beat me, Mr. Faber? Come on, Mr. Faber! Sometimes I make a mistake about people. I picked the wrong time to fight you. I'll be back someday, Mr. Favor. I'll be waiting. Copper mine cleared up, Mr. Wishbone. Well, it's about time. Hey, look at that. How did they get started? Death is gone. Now, take a look above you, Jesus. Sun's behind him now. Get in the water and let's help him! Do you really believe that is all there was to it, Senor Favor? It's all it could have been to it. Just the sun in their eyes. Galt. The land's yours, but not the woman. Never yet heard of a father giving away his daughter without a dowry. How about 50,000 acres? There's room enough here for all of us.
low country, two inches of rain in half an hour. Coming through the passes, it was two feet of snow. On this side of the mountains, we had two brushes with rustlers, ended up burying two hands. Now it's been two days since grass and water. But my job's to kick this herd along no matter what. The only way I know to get a thing done is to keep trying. Gil Favors, my name, Trail Boss. We've been on this dead weed for three days now, Mr. Favor. Just lost so much beef, it seems like we only got half a herd left. Come grass and water, they'll be fat and sassy again in no time at all. What we make since breakfast, Wishbone? Well, mushy only peels eight taters to the mile. I'd say we come four miles plus one spot. Mr. Fair! It'd be a hog to one more than that. Mighty pretty. Get Reston's land. Stay out if you ain't been asked in. Jed Reston's place over there. Help, 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 help. Bed down when you find water. I'll catch up. Roddy, in is your dress and your Sunday clothes. You want to visit? Right. to the wagon. Five dollars for the job. Hold it! I want the pleasure, Pa. All yours, son. Wouldn't want you to lose on the deal, Banyan. You still deny you stole? I guess he's learned his lesson. Ten lashes never taught no man nothing. Try for 15. Maybe you'll tell where he hid that milch cow. I guess he's learned his lesson. Can't help admiring his stubbornness, though. My name's Favor. Jed Reston. Welcome to the Bar XL. 
This is Roddy Yates. What did he do, Mr. Reston? No need to pry into another man's business. Oh, he stole a milch cow. Only three milch cows on the whole range. What would an Indian do with a milch cow? <laughs> he fancies himself a farmer. Can you imagine that? A Comanche aiming to farm? Oh, uh, this is my boy, Matt. Matt, shake hands with Rowdy Yates. And, uh... Gil Faber. I'm trail boss of a herd that's crossing your land right now. I passed your sign a ways back. I'm hoping you're asking me in. <laughs> you're a cattle man, ain't you? Of course you're in. I need a week, 10 days grazing, maybe. My front gate is 100 miles from my doorstep. You just pick out a likely range and make yourself at home. You'll be on my land no matter what direction you go in. Thanks. Except south, that is. South ain't my land anymore. Well, thanks again, Mr. Reston. Now, hold up, Mr. Favor. You boys been eating dust and alkali on the trail for quite a piece. We've got real beds here. Sweet water, shade trees, everything to ease the body. Much obliged, but I've got to get back to the herd. I understand. There's a real cattleman for you. But I think your steers would forgive you for sitting at a real table for one real meal. Hey, Banyan, show these gentlemen where to wash up, will you? This way. Mr. Favor. I think that's a lot of horse. Get on him! Get on him! You gotta time it, boy. You gotta time it. I'm out of wind, Pa. Out of wind or out of nerve. This time, hold him. A lot of horse. I gave him the mat for his 21st birthday a week ago. Seven days, and he still hasn't been in the saddle. It'll take a heap of man to ride him. You ain't a heap of man after 21 years in this country. You ain't never gonna make it. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Men sometimes have a habit of expecting an awful lot from their sons. You're right. Guess I shouldn't expect too much. He was puny and sickly when he was born. You wouldn't think anyone so puny and sickly could kill a person. Mother died when he was born. <laughs> Well, don't stand around letting our guests get hungry. Take them over at the cookhouse. That horse is thunder on a hoof. Pa knows horse flesh. Matter of fact, there ain't nothing on four legs or two that Pa ain't got the hang of. Yeah? I'm pretty handy with Mustangs. Maybe I can help you break them. Nobody's breaking that stallion but me. Something wrong? Those milch cows. What about it? I'm not overeducated, but I can count to three. So? You can count to three. The Indian took 15 lashes for stealing one of three milch cows. They're all there. So what was the reason? Since when do you need a reason to whip an Indian? I guess we'll be riding, Roddy. Hey, ain't you guys supposed to chow? My stomach won't hold much food now. I figure your stomach won't take the facts of life. Hold it. All that loud drumming is just to show he's full growed. Let's get our horses. Hey, 
Take your hands off of that coffee. But Wishbone, I want to make another pot of coffee. I remember your recipe. Yeah. Well, one pound of coffee in a pot, boil for 30 minutes, then pitch in a horseshoe, and if it sinks, add some more coffee. You open your mouth around here one more time, except say, sir, I'm going to stuff it full of dynamite and light the fuse. you'd be eating dinner tonight off of fancy china plates. Why, we couldn't bear the thought of missing one of your meals, Wishbone. Pour Mr. Favor some coffee. Where's Pete? Yeah, he's out making a bedtime check. Any trouble? The only trouble I'm having is drinking this sorry coffee. Get out of the way, Mudgy. Oh, boss, you're back. We get permission to cross this range? Rinson was as friendly as corn fritters. Speaking of corn fritters, if I eat any more of this beef, my belly's gonna sprout horns. I never seen an outfit where everybody's so full of smart alecky comments. Of course, I know you're all used to eating at them fancy French cafes in New Orleans. Well, if you don't like it, you can just give it back. Oh, it's good. It's real good, though. Reminds me, Mr. Favor, we're just about shed of supplies. We pass the town ways back. Come morning, we'll go in. I say, Pete, tell me about Comanches. They're mean. How mean? I'd say man for man, they've killed more whites than any other tribe. Comanche territory close by. Yeah, it's over south. The government's got them on a reservation. You figure they could become farmers? Farmers? What would they raise, scalps? Hey, Wishbone, give me another heart attack there. Still, it did not come. No. I will try tomorrow. That plow will get here one of these days. So? He's paid for it. And he's paid for the freight. He don't get the plow. I thought I married a human being. You think he really wants to farm? Sure. <laughs> That's what the Comanches want us all to think. We've got to get over that kind of feeling. You want to be surrounded by Comanches? You figure you'd be able to sleep in your bed at night? That's Jed Reston talking. Did Jed Reston put an arrow in my arm? It's Jed Reston who don't want that plow delivered. You got two feet left. Stand on them. All right. All right. You willing not to eat? I'll stand up against Reston. In a minute, Billy. Be right back. Now, gentlemen, name your poison. Well, the candy stick. Not 
not for sale. I make it uh, $53 even. I can build rake. Seed I must buy. Fresh out of seed. Overlooked an item. A uh, nickel's worth. Better not, mister. Nickel's worth. Your funeral, mister. Takes two. I'll bet five hundred. I call and raise it a thousand. Well, it puts me on. You trying to run one? I call. Three jacks. Two pair. Two pair? I said three jacks. I lose. How'd I stand now? Well, since the drive started, you're behind sixty-eight thousand four hundred and thirty dollars. How much is that in real money? Well, that Tally's down to dollar seventeen. That company. <laughs> it's resting. Guess he's come to check over the herd. Well, the way he's riding, he could trample the herd to death. Afternoon. Get off my range. Permission. You saw an Indian whipped on my ranch. You knew he was my enemy. Deny that you befriended him. I gave candy to a child. An Indian child. I can't tolerate ingratitude, Mr. Favor. That's exactly what you're guilty of. You making war on babies, Mr. Reston? Have your cattle off my range by nightfall. You said your front gate is 100 miles from your doorstep. I can't make that distance by nightfall. Three miles south is the Comanche Reservation. You'll find good grazing there. By nightfall, if there's a steer on this range without the Bar XL brand, he gets shot where he stands. I still can't make it by nightfall. I've never been known as a cruel, unreasonable man. You've got an extra 24 hours before we start shooting your cattle. Let's go. Sure, hope you can reason with them Comanches. Ain't gonna be easy though with a couple of thousand doggies at his heels. You can come if you want. Sure thing. Why, you don't even know where. You can't just go riding into Comanche territory. Pete, you're the Indian expert. Tell him. Wishbone's right, Mr. Favor. You go riding in there, the odds are you don't come out. If we don't go in there, what'll happen when Reston starts shooting? You can always shoot back. No. 
With the right to graze, I figure we can butter a few beeves, maybe some flour and blankets. I'd like to come along. We're trading, not scouting. You nurse the herd. <laughs> Preston's boundary marker. They got a weakness for signs. Got the coffee. We'll make like we've been asked in. Right. Put it away. They can just as easy put him in it. Ease off your gun belt. Duco's way. Kao. Kao winning it. Winning it. Go. My cattle are weak and hungry. They've got to rest. They've got to graze. If Reston had half of his land, he would still have more than enough. He ordered us away. We'll trade for the privilege we ask. Beef, flour, blankets, anything you need, we'll give. You offer friendship. That is enough. Bring your cattle. They're burning off the feathers. My belly won't wait. Well, you're in luck. I found one hen naked. After that, apple pie. Apple pie? When are you going to grow up and stop being astonished at everything? Well, move the herd onto the reservation tonight. Is that all you got to say? No. Where's the gravy? You know, Indians sure do like beef, just like white men.
Comanches, the other side of the hill. Okay, let's cut six head out of the bunch. I'd like you to have them. He does not need it. I would feel better. My people will be grateful. Wagura wede. Baslach asked me to bring you to him. Will you come? Our pleasure. Welcome to my farm. Daslach is not asleep, but he dreams. Uh, the Kimachis will be nothing if they don't leave their old ways behind them. Well, if that isn't the prettiest pouch I ever seen. He made it for you. My son will keep yours for good luck. Oh, I got me a pouch. Hey, that's some job for one man. She said it helps. To be a fool is his wish. I will help. What's eating Reston that he doesn't understand? He wants our land. And someday he will get it. I will go now to find some grass for the cows you have brought us. Good and got you, Sarah. When I get plowed, this will be farm. When here I said you come to eat with us. Our pleasure. Yeah, has learned to cook with stove. Say, did you do these? Some. Some Chisera did. Chisera? Who'd have figured? When hot is finished, we will be ready for it. If it does not have the right taste, it is, it is because it is a new way with me. Oh, she's afraid it will not taste right. Hey, this is a good one, eh? We got a cook named Wishbone. We sure take lessons from you. <laughs> Ah, this is for a boy. Uh, he is not yet of age to eat with elders. Come, boy. Tazlach is a good man. Tell that by looking around the place. It is hard for people to believe a Comanche would choose peace to fighting. They, they do not know Tazlach. Well, now it is not much of farm. But when I get plow, I show them Indian can farm. It's my guess you'll be a good farmer. Now, come on, let's eat. like the men are getting fatter than the cows. Yeah, they could use a little thinning down. And as for the herd, they're about as fat as they're gonna get. Well, let's get moving before we forget the taste of dust. All right, I'll get them ready. All right, finish your chow and saddle up. We're moving on. 
I'm riding to Tuss Lutch's farm to say goodbye. You can saddle two horses if you want. Right. You can finish your coffee first. Welcome. Morning, Button. What's the matter? Tazlotch has been insulted, and the boy blames everyone. Who insulted Tazlotch? The town. They will not give him the plow. Where is he? The hate is still there. They put up sign. No Indians allowed. They have a weakness for signs. It is their town, but it is my plow. Here is the paper. I ask them, give me plow. They fire a rifle to drive me away. I'll get your plow for you. Comanche get my plow. Chisera gone to gather braves. That's a fool's play. Reston will have reason to call soldiers. Reston can't want anything that bad. Uh. It is hard to say. Chisira right? I wrong? I'll go see Reston. No, it is not your trouble. Cattle are ready for trail. Don't be foolish. Go. After I do a chore. When a man like Reston wants killing, there is nothing to do but give him killing. Nobody has to move in the direction Reston's pushing. Ride back to the camp, Rowdy. See that the supply wagon is stripped down. We may have to do some hauling. Mr. Favor, you've done what no other white man has ever been able to do. Get something out of the Comanches. One hand washes the other. Do something for them, they'll do something for you. I got no candy for an Indian. You've got a plow. Won't be much to give up, since it doesn't belong to you. It's the townspeople that won't give it up. You pull the strings and they jump. Look at it this way, Mr. Favor. Ever since I can remember, the land of the South belonged to my family. After the war, the politicians in Washington gave it to the Comanches. But before you can remember, the land belonged to them. I aim to move the Comanches out of there. You don't think they'd go someplace else if they've got farms? Chisera's coming in with everything he's got in back of him. They're going after the town. You can stop it. You give me credit for more power than I own. I'm giving you credit for the killing that'll be. Maybe he's right, Pop. When you master that stallion, then you can enter the men's council in the meantime. Keep your mouth shut. Mr. Favor. You take a hint awful hard. How many times do you have to be told that you're not welcome on this range? Worth the try. The wagon's just about ready. I hope you know what you're up to. Commands has been pouring through here all day long. Finish it in the team. Right. I allow myself the privilege of calling you a fool just once a drive, boss. This is that once. Herd will never be primer than they are right now. I know. It ain't sense to get worked into an Indian war when you can get around it. If we take off now, we could be sitting in a snug hotel come the finish of the drive. I'd like that. If I could sit in that snug hotel and not remember back to this time, I'd do it. Ready, Mr. Favor? <laughs>
afternoon. This ain't yours. That's right. We're taking delivery for a friend. Well, it ain't come yet. Sure. That thing outside's a cotton gin. Yeah, it belongs to somebody else. Maybe so. Show me an order from somebody else. It belongs to the Indian. needed. You heard me. I got a bill of sale showing ownership. You gotta let them load up that plow? You know what this'll mean? We take this thing with us. You won't have a couple thousand Comanches on your necks. We can't afford to go against Reston. That's right. Reston spread gives us all a living. How long are you gonna live on your knees? We gonna take that from him? He's saying the truth. You're fools. Reston needs you as much as you need him. Maybe we just ain't big enough to take the chance he don't. The man doesn't know how big a shadow he throws until he stands up. Open up. more important, Jed Reston or your town? Let us deliver this, and your town won't be wiped out by Comanches. Or you can shoot us in the back and make Reston happy. <laughs> that stallion. He took off. He couldn't control him. That any reason to do this? He took him into the reservation. Banyan tracked him here. They drove him off with guns. The Comanches have got Matt. Get the plow. I'm gonna give you one more chance to interfere, Mr. Favor. I just sent his squaw and papoose to Casara to tell him something. If Matt isn't back by noon tomorrow, I'm gonna hang him on Main Street. Let's go. We lose? Everything. Water's over here. Sarah's telling the truth. He then, is. Then Comanche rifle fire must have drove off Banyan when he was tracking that stallion. If Chisera said Matt isn't a Comanche captive, then he isn't. Son of Reston has been found.
My horse. Where's my horse? I gotta ride him. We will find your horse. Lie still and rest. Lie, lie still. Why don't we just drag him into town and set Tashlitz free? It's Jasera's play. Let him make it. Seems to me one E would nurse made a resting with a tomahawk. You hurt. The stallion threw me. Your father's going to hang Toslach unless he sees you by noon. Why? He thinks you're a Comanche captive. Well, give me a horse. I'll stop it. Only the Comanches can stop it. Well, he, my father said if I came in by noon. Your father is a liar. The Reston's a man of honor. Your father has no honor. He will hang Toslach. This will start a war. He will get our land. You're just looking for an excuse to kill me. We will kill only one man for the death of Taslach. Jet Reston. Only those who stand in the way will also die. Nagire. Go. turn him loose for? If he goes in without Comanches, maybe rest and we'll give up Taslach. We'll go after him just to make sure. Come on, Raul, let's pick up our horses. <laughs> it's only three hours to noon. Oh, Reston's just trying to throw a little scare in everybody. You all right? No sense waiting till noon. Let's hang him now. Papa, I'm all right. Those redskins got to be taught a lesson. I was hurt. They took care of me. You said if I got in by noon. Never mind what I said. The Reston's the men of honor. can I do? We'll back you. Then maybe they will. Can't do this, Mr. Reston. Shut up. No, Pa. Matt, you disappointed your Pa. You came back alive. You've got to turn him loose, Pa. Don't be stupid. He's land hungry. You'd rather see his own son dead and lose a chance to spread his boundary markers. You're digging your own grave with your mouth, Mr. Favor. Any man interferes and he gets cut down. Ask him. Go ahead, ask him if he wouldn't rather see you dead than lose an acre. I warned you. Pa, let the Indian go. No. You'll never get another chance like this. Cause an Indian war, soldiers come in, kill a lot of people. But Jed Reston will get more land. Shut up. Take a good look, Matt. That's the image you wanted to mold yourself into. 
a liar, a cheat, fake. That's enough. He's right. You wanted me dead. Well, here's your chance. Are you going against me? Why not? You've been against me all my life. That's not true, Matt. I tried. I'm ashamed to be arrested. Don't say that. Matt? You can come with us if you want. No, thanks, Mr. Favor. I'd rather be on my own for a while. Never will I forget my two friends. I'm sorry your dream didn't pan out. It will someday, maybe. This thing rusting away in a pasture somewhere. Ain't doing us any good. You as a friend? What? The Indian's sitting here. Makes some folks kind of nervous. I had to take him out of the other car. He was scaring a couple of old ladies. But he's with me. No harm at all, I promise you. Well, I sure don't mind if he don't. That's fine, fine. Now, just stay put now. I'll be up in the smoker. Thank you. Hmm? I am grateful for your acceptance to travel to strange, far places is difficult when one is without his loved ones. Yes, I know what you mean. anyway, a celebration or a funeral? What are we celebrating? Well, a pocket full of money, a month with nothing to do, and nine more saloons we haven't been in yet. <laughs> well, nine saloons will take care of the money. We'll still have a month with nothing to do. Senor Pete, uh, 
I do not think I can last for even one more. <laughs> Drover than just pushing babes around. <laughs> All right, so it isn't a celebration, but why is there a funeral? There ain't no funeral. Well, then why is everybody so. Oh, I get it. It's the boss. Mr. Favor isn't here to lead you around by the hand. His little boys are afraid to go out alone. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Begrudging a man a chance to have a vacation and see his kids. You've been drinking anyway. Whatever it is, I think you need a couple more. Now eat the glass this time, will you? Uh, Mr. Rowdy! Mr. Rowdy! Mr. Rowdy, I think you better take this. What is it? It's a telegraph from Mr. Favor. Mr. Favor? Well, I was passing by his telegraph office, and I heard this fellow talking to a couple drovers. And he was asking if he knew a trail boss named Mr. Favor. Uh. So, of course, I said, I guess I did. So, the next thing I knew, he shoved us in my hand. Well, why didn't you tell him Mr. Favor was out of town? Well, he didn't give me a chance, Mr. Nolan. What am I supposed to do with it? You can't deliver it, that's for certain. Well, it might be business. Mr. Favor left you in charge. Yeah, well, supposing it ain't. Only one way to find out. Oh, man. <laughs> his sister-in-law. That's where the kids are staying. Your visit would not be right at present time. Would upset children. Strongly urge you not to come. Letter follows Eleanor. Oh, no, no. Letter follows Eleanor. <laughs> oh, well. Bartender! You have not enough room. Oh, no, no, it's not that. It's just these city clothes. The discomforts of civilization. And it takes some getting used to again. You have been gone a long time. <laughs> Is it that obvious? The signs are plain. The face that has felt many suns. The eyes that seek. The horizon, a man of the open fields. Maybe too much so. I'm almost forgotten there is another way to live. Home, family, neighbors. So you return for good? Oh, no, just a visit. See my two daughters. My wife died a few years ago. They've been staying with an aunt in Philadelphia. Philadelphia? The great city of the East? One of them. You can tell me of it? Not too much to tell. A lot of people, a lot of buildings. Why, are you going there? Among the other cities. It will be very strange. I have never seen such a place before. We can start out even. I'm sure the people of Philadelphia have never seen anyone like you either. That is what the Colonel said. Why he asked me to come with him. The Colonel? Colonel Summers, he has what he calls a Wild West show. I am to be part of it. Doing what? Ride. Show my skill with the lance and the bow. Let the people of the East see a true chief of the Pawnee. You think this is wrong? No, I, I couldn't say. The year has been hard for my people. The winter was bitter. There is much hunger and sickness. Colonel Summers offered much money. 
It meant food, seed, grain, a chance to begin again. Of course, then, you're doing a fine thing. May it be the right thing to go so far to such a strange place. It is almost frightening. I trust we shall both find a friendly welcome and a rewarding visit. to call me Maggie. I've always called you that. You don't remember me, huh? No. And my Aunt Eleanor says I should never talk to strangers. She's absolutely right. But I'm not exactly a stranger. Honest. I'm your father. my daddy. It's been a long time. But I saw his picture. He sent it last Christmas. Well, then. He had a big hat and boots, and he wore an apron on both of his legs. That's my working clothes. I got all dressed up to come to see you. You're really my daddy? Honest and truly? Honest and truly. What are you doing, child? I've told you never to speak to strangers. It's Daddy, Aunt Eleanor. It's Daddy. Gil. Hello, Eleanor. It's good to see you again. And you, but... You were expecting me, weren't you? You, you got my letter. Oh, yes, yes. But didn't you get my wire? Well, no. Is anything wrong? Not exactly. It's just that... Gillian's sick again. Margaret. Sick? It's nothing serious. She's always sick. Will you be still, Margaret? I'm sorry, Gil. This isn't a very gracious welcome. What about Gillian? Where is she? She's in her room. There's nothing to worry about, really. I'll explain after you've seen her. Oh, no, Margaret. You stay outside. Why? Well, you know how upset Gillian gets when she has too much company. Besides, you should give her a chance to say hello to her father. But he's my father, too. I'll tell you what. You see this bundle? Presents? Yeah, for you and Gillian. Now, why don't you sort them out and divide them into things that you like and things you think she'd like, huh? Sure. You haven't lost your way with women. At least not at that age. Gillian? Yes, Aunt Eleanor? Yes. Feeling better, dear? A little. Good. I have a wonderful surprise for you. Look who's here. Gillian, honey. Sorry to hear you're not feeling well. I'll be all right. Sure you will. We've got a lot to do. We're going to have a fine time together. That's nice. So you hurry up and get well now, here? Yeah? I'll try. It's been such a long time, honey. Got a lot of catching up to do. And Eleanor? Yes, dear. Will you fix my pillows? I want to lie down now. Here, let me do it. It's been a long time since I've had a chance to fuss over my girl. How about that? 
Fine, thank you. Rest up now. I'll, I'll be in to see you later. All right. I'll bring your supper in a few minutes, dear. And Eleanor? Yes, dear. I'll be right with you, Bill. Maybe you'd better let me have it straight. What's wrong? It's nothing serious, Gail, believe me. She just happens to be a delicate child. I'm not and... talking about that. It seems that she doesn't want me here, even that she's afraid of me. Well, that's why I sent you the wire. I, I was afraid this would happen. But why? Is it something I've done? Maybe it's something you haven't done. Maggie! Maggie, what do you think you're doing? Just showing Gillian some of our puppies. Yeah. Well, maybe you'd better climb down now. I didn't do it on purpose, Daddy. Honest. I didn't mean to scare Gilly in that way. Sure, I know. She's no fun anymore. She never wants to play. She's always sick. Does she like to be sick, Daddy? Well, nobody really likes to be sick, honey. I bet she does. I don't feel well. I have to lie down. She's a sissy. Oh, you won't remember it because you're too young. But she was a real tomboy once, even wilder than you. She used to be fighting with all the boys in school. And when we went riding, she always wanted to race. Riding? A real horse? Her own pinto. I wish I could ride a horse. But Aunt Eleanor won't let me. Why not? Oh, she's afraid we'll fall off. Margaret. Your supper's ready, dear. Go in and wash up now. Yes, Aunt Eleanor. And leave that awful thing outside. Oh, it's not real. I mean, it was, but it's just a skin. Daddy says I can make a belt out of it. We'll discuss that later. Yes, Aunt Eleanor. I'll hurry. Will you wait for me, Daddy? Of course I will. Maybe it isn't important, but we always call her Margaret. Maggie just seems more fitting somehow. Perhaps. But names stick, and it wouldn't be appropriate for a young lady. Any more than an Indian bonnet and war paint? Frankly, no. This is Philadelphia, Gil. Children are raised differently here. So I notice. You asked me to take care of them. I feel as though I have the right to bring them up as I see fit. Of course you do. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I'm not looking for appreciation. I couldn't love them anymore if they were my own. What are we fighting about, Eleanor? I didn't realize we were. You don't want me here, do you? Only because of Gillian. Do you know the last time she got sick? When I told her you were coming. Do you know what she said to me upstairs? She was afraid you were going to take her back with you. Why should she be afraid of me? I'm her father. In name only. It's been more than two years. You're a stranger now. I've kept in touch. All the letters and presents in the world won't make up for one goodnight kiss. What are you trying to say? You have to decide, Gil, to be a real father or someone who just brings presents. You know I can't take them back. I, I'm not prepared to take care of two little girls. Not in Texas, obviously. And Eleanor. Gillian's calling you. Tell her I'll be right up. I'll fix up the bedroom for you. Tight with the left hand, pull the arrow with those fingers, now sight along the arrow, and pull it back as far as you can. Steady now. 
Let it go. I did it! I did it! Gillian, did you see? Good. Hey, Gillian, how about you taking a try at it? Yeah, come on, Gillian. It's fun. Well, all right. Hold the bow in the left hand. Now, the arrow in there. Draw back slowly and... Gillian, what on earth are you doing? No, well, I'm just showing them how to protect themselves from Indians. And I hit the target. This is hardly the sort of thing to do in the house, Gil. Sorry, I didn't stop to think. And you girls were supposed to be practicing. Mm. Do Indians play the piano, Daddy? No, but then they don't play music as pretty as you do either. Really, Gil, you're, you're worse than the children. Let's see if we can't find something special. I think this is a real treat. Hey, how about this? A Wild West show? What's that? Something like a circus, only Western style. With wild animals and Indians, too? Oh, sure. Look right here. Ogulla, chief of the Pawnee tribe. Matter of fact, I know him personally. You do? I don't believe it. Why not? He didn't scalp you. <laughs> Indians aren't that savage. In their own way, they're just as civilized as we are, if not more so. And they don't kill people and burn down their houses? Oh, sure, there's a few bad people in every race, but Indians are humans, just like you. Different way of life, maybe, but underneath, just the same. Indian brave is like me, Indian children are like you. And a squaw is like Aunt Eleanor? Uh, yeah, well, sort of. Do they do the same things we do? Of course. Men work, women take care of their families, children learn and play. Games? Mm-hmm. What kind? Uh, let's see. Oh, here. Yeah. You lie down on the floor facing me. Yeah, like this. Now, put your arm up, take hold of my hand, like that. There. Now, this is called Indian wrestling. The idea is to force the other person's hand down to the floor like that. Oh, that's not fair. You're bigger. All right. You use both hands. Right. You ready? Go. Go on, <laughs> Margaret. Push it down. I can't. Ooh. Try harder. Well, come help me. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Gillian, what are you doing? Daddy's showing us a new game. Look at you all hot and perspiring. But I feel all right. Well, you won't if you keep this up. Now, I want you to sit quietly or I'll have to put you back to bed. Yes, Anna. You too, Margaret. Really, Gil, I should think you'd know better. Almost as good as you, Gillian. Remember when we rode together? Say, uh, would you like to try again? I don't think I'd better. Oh, just up and down the street a little. All right. Maggie? Oh, wait, I can't. My dress is too long. Pull it up like I did. You're wearing bloomers. I think you can manage. All right. Remember how to hold the reins now, firmly, not too tight. Scared? No. We'll take it nice and easy. Gil, wait! Look at Gillian, Aunt Eleanor. Gil, no, it isn't safe. Gillian's been riding before. Come on, Gillian. Gillian! Gillian! Oh, 
That's all right, honey. It's all right. That's it. Settle down. Settle down. Gillian! It's all right, Eleanor. Nothing wrong. Nothing's wrong. She might have been killed. Come on, darling. I'll take you back. Not yet. The dog just frightened the horse and made him shy. She dropped the reins. The horse didn't know what to do. Nobody was giving him any orders, so he just went off on his own. Gil, this is no time for... Please, for... Eleanor. A horse needs a firm hand. Nothing to be frightened of as long as you've got control of it. You understand that? Let's finish our ride then. Yes, Daddy. Is this why you came, Gil? To destroy everything I've tried to do? Now, Eleanor, you know better than that. I only know you've succeeded in wrecking a happy, orderly household. You've made a roughneck out of Margaret, and you've endangered Gillian's health. There doesn't seem to be anything really wrong with her health. Have you been taking care of her the past two years? Have you sat up nights with her, nursed her, tended her hand and foot? Have you tried not tending them? I mean, kids are pretty smart. They catch on real quick the easiest way to get what they want. So I haven't done a good job. I didn't say that. Well, you're certainly trying to prove it. Eleanor, you're putting me in a bad spot. I realize how much you've done for them, how much you love them. I can't repay that. Oh, I'm not looking for repayment, Gil. I I'm just trying to bring them up the best way I know how. Fine, but isn't there some room for some fun in their life? I'm I mean, hang it all, do you expect me to stand still when I see something's wrong? Well, since it's that wrong, I suggest you make other arrangements. Other arrangements? Take them back with you, bring them up your way. Wait a minute. You're their father, it's your right. Go on, take them back to your, to your horses and cattle and cowboys and Indians. I can't do that. Well, that's one problem you'll have to decide for yourself. I'm leaving. Leaving? I'll visit some friends. You can stay here until you make up your mind. At least I'll know the children will have a decent home. We're sorry, Daddy. your fault. Don't you worry about it. But you won't go away now, will you, Daddy? You won't leave us. No, honey. Of course not. So we pushed those steers all night long. Next morning when the storm hit, they were all safe on high ground. Good. I wish I could see a cattle drive sometime. Well, you will sometime, when you're a little bit older. Right now, it's time for bed. Daddy? It really hasn't been so awful, has it? What? Being here with us. I mean, you don't wish you were back in Texas, do you? Oh, no, of course not. Well, I do. Maggie! With us. <laughs> well, sounds like company. You two get on up to bed now. Excuse me, is there a Mr. Favor? Please, Hey, <laughs> you no good saddle trash. Good to see you. Come on. I wish you'd been that glad back on the drive sometimes. What are you doing here? Well, we get this telegram saying for you not to come to Philadelphia, and then we get one from you saying you're going to stay here. Yeah, when you said you weren't coming back and provided to handle the next drive, we figured you must be in kind of hot water. Yeah, well, sort of. I'll tell you about it. Oh, girls, come on in here. I want you to meet my daughters. Gillian, Maggie, there's Pete Nolan, and Wishbone. You heard me tell about them. Miss Gillian, ladies. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> uh, boss's daughter's all right. Come on, you two get up to bed now. I'll be up in a few minutes to tuck you in. Nice kids. Yeah, that's part of the trouble. Sit down, make yourselves comfortable. Are you in some kind of trouble here? Well, not exactly. Uh, no, he's going into the whole story. 
just that I've got to stay here and take care of the girls. Well, what about your sister-in-law? Well, we had a disagreement. She left him with me. The kids can always grow up in Texas. What, a cattle drive? Oh, Pete, not girls. Particularly not the way they've been raised. I couldn't just yank them out of this kind of a life. Not now. And what can you do here? I'll find a job. What kind of a job? Oh, I don't know. I haven't had too much chance to look around. I've been too busy with the girls. Well, we wondered what we was going to do in Philadelphia. What do you mean by that? We're going to stay here and take care of things while you find yourself a job. Wait a minute. Now, no arguments. It's all settled. Look, you've got to get back to the herd. Rowdy and the crew's going to need you. There's time. We'll get back all right. After we see that you're bedded down properly. Oh, you're crazy. What do you know about taking care of a little girl? Can't be any rougher than riding herd on a bunch of beeves. That's right. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you where you bunk. Hey. I'd have brought my saddle blankets, but I didn't think you'd want me sleeping in the yard. <laughs> Herding beeves. Some horse. You was mine, I'd put you out of your misery. Anything in the morning paper? No. A couple things I might be able to do. One thing sure, they don't need a trail boss in Philadelphia. Any kind of a cattleman, for that matter. I really bought myself something this time. Well, why don't you have a talk with your sister-in-law? Kind of heart to heart. Well, she was pretty mad when she left here. She can be real stubborn. Well, that runs in the family. Oh, I didn't ask for this wish. He, he wasn't handling the girls right. So you barge in like an ox and upset the whole shebang. No, I tried to work things out. Like a trail boss, I'll bet. Well, it seems to me there must be something pretty decent about her or she wouldn't leave you in the house like this. Of course there is. She's a fine woman. She loves the girls, but... Oh, you wouldn't understand. Daddy, Daddy, come quick! What's wrong? A parade with horses and wagons and real cowboys! <laughs> You're going to take us to see, Daddy? That's right. There's the Colonel himself. Make you homesick wish? Oh, I don't know. I'd stack Quince and Scarlet against these dudes any time. There he is. There's the Indian. Is he the one you know, Daddy? Yeah. Ogala, guilt favor from the train. Go on, get back. If you want to talk to him, you'll have to buy a ticket. See you, was it? I don't get it. We're friendly on the train. He said he was going to perform in the show, riding and shooting. Nothing like that. The Pawnees are proud people. I can't figure a chief taking part in a sideshow stunt like that. Mm. You saw him, didn't you? See, and ain't always believing.
Hey! We ain't open yet. Show ain't until tonight. We want to see Colonel Summers on business. Oh. Fourth wagon down on the right. seen enough. You two come to laugh and mock. I just want to get things straight. On the train you said you were going to be in the show. Is this what you meant? To be treated like an animal. To stand in shame before the whites. To bring disgrace upon myself and my people. I would rather have been dragged by wild horses. Well, what do you do it for? Colonel Summers says this is what the people of the East believe a pony to be. This is what they wish to see. Didn't have to go along with him. Colonel Summers has many men. I am but one. These are not only for the show. He's keeping you prisoner? It will not be forever. And then Colonel Summers will pay. All of the whites will pay. My people and I will wash this insult with your blood. You want to see me? You apparently went to the wrong wagon, friend. No, we found the right one. I've seen you before. On the train coming east. Oh, yes. Only then you treated Ogala like a human. Oh, this is part of the act. That's what I'm paying him for. It's not the way I hear it. Now, you wouldn't take the word of an Indian for anything, would you? against yours any time. What do you want, Favor? Let him go. You got no right to hold him. I have a contract. He has his money. Now he's got to deliver. He wasn't paid for this. He's being paid to perform. And he's performing the way I want. All right. The law will have something to say about this. Not much. Contract's legal. Slavery is. If that's all you came to see me about, friend, goodbye. We'll be back. Anytime. Come to the show tonight. See what a big attraction the Indian is. Why folks get so excited sometimes, they even throw things at them. You the That way out. Mr. Favor in? Well, no, but he should be back any minute. Well, I'm I'm Eleanor Bradley, Mr. Favor's sister-in-law. Oh, well, sure. Come on in. I'm Wishbone, Mr. Favor's cook. Say, that's a mighty fine stove you got back there. I don't often get a chance at one's good enough to bake a cake. Are the children here? Sure, you want to see them? Please. Hey, you ladies, come on down here. Somebody to see you. Be right there, Wishbone. Uh, you want to come in and sit down? Thank you. Are the, the children well? Oh, fine, fine. Not a healthier pair of fillies anywhere. I'm glad. Uh, of course, they miss you. They do. Well, being bossed by their paws, one thing, but, well, girls need a woman's hand, don't you think? Well, I used to think so, but I'm beginning to wonder. Gil certainly doesn't feel that... Oh, well, don't pay him any mind. Well, he's so used to bossing men and cattle, he don't know how to talk to a woman anymore. It doesn't mean half what he says. I said some pretty awful things myself. I I wanted to see Gil and try to explain that. Aunt Eleanor! Oh, Gillian, I've missed you so. <sighs> Me too. You're feeling all right, darling. I haven't been sick once. <laughs> Aunt Eleanor! Oh, Margaret. So good to see you. You look wonderful, darling. 
Your father must be treating you very well. Oh, yes. We have lots of fun, and we play all kinds of games. Margaret, that isn't a real gun, is it? Sure it is. And your father let you play with it? Now, wait a minute. You got no business with that. Where'd you get it anyway? From Pete's room. You mean Gil actually allows a gun in the house? Well, he... Now, give me that. You got no business with it anyway. Why not? Well, because it isn't any toy. Now, hand it over. No, don't ever point it at anybody. Now, just hold it right there. I'll take it real easy. Oh, well, now, don't get any wrong ideas, ma'am. Why, this is all a mistake. Obviously. And I'm the one who's made it. Did I do something wrong? Wrong? Didn't anybody ever tell you guns are dangerous? Well, nobody ought to fool around with these things. Almost anything can say... <laughs> See what I mean? I never thought I'd see the day when Gil Favor takes up the lying down. What are you talking about? Where is he? Been off the hack, I guess. Take what lamb down? Pete. Pete, you've got to be reasonable. Well, what's going on? Oh, Pete's just being pig-headed. At least I'm not afraid of a fight. Well, somebody simmer down and tell me what's going on. Well, they got that Indian chained up like a slave, like a wild animal. He won't do anything to set him free. I'm doing everything I can. Yeah. A police, a lawyer. Now, that's a big help, isn't it? Well, it's the only way. The lawyer will draw up a complaint and get a subpoena. Then the police can follow up with charges. In the meantime, the Indian sits there and rots. And what good is it going to do for you to both be in jail when all you got to do is wait a few days? A few hours is too much. I wish. Will you pound some sense into him? What? Don't seem right to just leave him there if we can help him. And we can. Oh, sure. Gun you in and blast him out? Can't you get it through your thick head? This isn't Texas, it's Philadelphia. Yeah, you know, and you're beginning to fit in pretty good. Maybe it's just as well you're staying here, because I never want to work for you again. Oh, uh, you had a caller. Huh? Yeah, your sister-in-law came. What you want? Uh, well, I don't know. She waited and then put the children to bed, and she left, said she'd be back in the morning. What's this all about? Oh, I don't know. I'm not so sure this is a good idea. I didn't ask you to go home. Well, somebody's got to be sure you don't get your head blown off. Where are you going? We're going to see a sick friend. Yeah, he's sick, real sick. Don't tell your father. No, you don't want to worry your daddy, do you? No. All right, go on back up to bed. All right. Well, it is. What are you doing up and around at this hour? We were thirsty. We went to get a drink. Both of you? At the same time? Well, I was awfully thirsty, Daddy. All right, come on. Let's get to bed. Wishbone and Pete. Come on, something's going on here. I'd better know about it. Well, they went to see a sick friend. Sick friend? But they didn't want you to worry. And you don't have to, Daddy. They'll be all right. Pete took his gun with him. Oh, no. Do you know where your Aunt Eleanor's staying? At Mrs. Perkins. Where does she live? Down that way. Where down there? Do you know the address? Uh, Prospect Street, 925. 925 Prospect. Do you mind staying alone for a little bit? I have to go out. It's it's important. Can we stay up and keep the light on? Yeah, sure. Come on, Gillian. I'll get in your bed and you can tell me some ghost stories.
What are you doing here? I need your help, Ellen. You need my help? Is something wrong with the children? Oh, no, no, they're fine, but I'll have to leave them alone for a little bit. Could you go over there? I'm surprised you're that concerned. Ellen, there's not time to explain. Could you stay with them? Of course. Thanks, Eleanor. <laughs> Wish. Mr. Favor, Christmas. I thought you were... It's a good thing I wasn't. Where's Pete? Well, uh... Never mind. I can guess. You shouldn't have left the kids alone. You got any clothes for Ogala? He can't run through Philadelphia in a loincloth. Well, no. Uh, I thought so. Here, take these. Look. You'd better stick with Pete. Keep him out of trouble, at least until they get out of civilization. You're gonna need some more money. Oh, no, we got money. It's a long, rough trip. You can't take any trains or stagecoaches. Everybody from here to Texas is gonna be looking for you. Somebody's coming. Tell Pete to hold up. Someone's coming. They'll cover. We'd better draw them off. Come on. For someone trying to dodge trouble, you got a funny way of showing it. Hey, let's really give them something to keep them busy. Try and slow them up a bit. They got the Indians! job you were looking for? They could use a good horse wrangler. <laughs> Look, you better get moving to catch up with Pete. I'll get back to the kids. Yeah. Give him a big hug for me. All right, now, this is the way Daddy showed me. Make sure that the colored feather's on the outside. Now pull back and let go. Good. Can I try? Sure. All right, now, hold it firm. On pull this Pull back, side? yes, with the red feather right. on the outside. All right, now, you try it. I wouldn't have known Gillian when I came over last night. Do you know how she met me? Sliding down the banister? <laughs> it was so good to see her active and laughing again. I guess I have been overprotecting them, Gil, but the way we've been living without a man around the house... Well, I didn't have to barrel in here and find the one thing wrong and not mention everything else that you've done so right. 
Well, it gets pretty frightening sometimes. When they're not your own, somehow you feel the responsibility even more. I could have taken the time to find that out. Eleanor, the reason I left them with you in the first place is because I trusted you and your love for them. I still do. You remember that while I'm away? I have the feeling they'll grow up in spite of us. I'm sorry about your disagreement with Mr. Nolan. Pete and I have had disagreements before. Couldn't take a chance on him bringing Ogala here. I didn't want to involve you with the children in the summers. But will they get away? Oh, I sent Wishbone after them. He'll keep them out of trouble. Well, girls? Do you really have to go, Daddy? The sooner I get back to work, the sooner we can be together. But when will we see you again? I hope it won't be too long. See, maybe come this summer we can talk your Aunt Eleanor into seeing what folks in Texas live like. Will you, Aunt Eleanor? Will you? It sounds like a wonderful idea. We'll all look forward to it. Goodbye, Eleanor. And thanks. Thank you, Gil. Just remember, no matter how long it is or how far apart we are, when you love someone, you're always with them. Mr. Wallace, lock's broken. I'll be with you in a minute, Mr. Wallace. You know, you sure are taking advantage of me. <laughs> this picture alone is worth $50. Lies! Gil. Gil Favor. Oh, <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, I was expecting somebody else. Gil, um, sit down. Hmm? Oh, okay, just, just a minute. Oh, boy. Sit down. How are you? Okay. Uh, why, why don't we have a drink? Uh, come on, come on, come, come on. Well, well, Gil, it's... Oh, gosh, it's good to see you. Tell me all about yourself. Here you are. Down there. What brings you to this part of the woods, huh? Driving a herd to Denver. Army's got us held up a few miles west of here. A little car with trouble. I had some time on my hands, so... Well, it couldn't have worked out any better. Say, if, if you had have, uh, if you had have waited another week, we'd have missed each other. Hey, um, what happened, Lodge? Oh, that's, uh, bad cards and good whiskey. <laughs> Ah, but uh, you don't have to worry about me. I'm, I may be down, but, oh, sir, I've still got plenty of bounce in me. I got plenty of bounce. Well, this is run down a little, but it shouldn't take too much work to fix it up. I'll uh, tell you the truth. It's, uh, it's not mine anymore. The bank foreclosed on me last week. They give me a month to clear out. See, uh, I've got some money in a bank in San Antonio. Not ain't much, but... Ah, thanks, thanks, Gil, but hand out won't do me any good. Oh, and I, I need something more substantial. What I got to do, I got to start ranching again some other place. Some place where people don't know me. Some place where I don't have a reputation to live down. Got a place in mind? Colorado. How come Colorado? 
Because that's where you're going. Well, I don't see what my going there has anything to do with it. Get out. Come on, I'll show you what. See those cattle? 30 of them. That is all I own in the world. But I did it before, Gil. I can do it again. I started this ranch 15 years ago with 30 head of cattle. And I built it up to 50,000. You remember? Oh, I remember. Well, I can do the same thing with those 30, if you'll let me drive them to Colorado with you. Those? I don't know, Lige. I thought you wanted to help me, Gil. Yeah, I do, but... But you're not going to. Lige, you know how much I appreciate what you've done for me. I want to help you. Forget it, Gil. Forget it. I, I didn't realize I was asking so much. After all, I'm not asking you to drive 2,000 head like I used to. Huh? Now, you know how bad it is to mix herds in the middle of a drive. I'm sorry I asked you. Well, if, if you will excuse me, Gil, I, uh, I'm expecting somebody else. Uh, real nice to see you. Oh, come on, lie. All right, all right, you win. Gil, I knew you wouldn't let me down, not you. <laughs> Look, sure, not, not, not after all I've done for you, or and not after all we've been through together, huh? Gil, I, I'll never forget this. I look, Lies, uh, ranch and Droven ain't the same. Couldn't be rough. Oh, no, no. Come on. Huh. You, you don't scare me. I'll hold up my end of the stick. You don't have to worry about me. And there's rules, Lige. Expect them to be obeyed. First off, uh... I know, I know. <laughs> it seems like old Mr. John Barleycorn is always at the head of the list. Huh? <laughs> always. <laughs> Plus, no maverickin', no strays, more time and trouble than they're worth. One last thing, I, uh, I give the orders. Understood? Well, you're the boss, Gil. Whatever you say goes. Look here, I, I don't want any special favors. No, sir. I'll eat what the men eat. I'll sleep where the men sleep. I'll stand guard at night. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. Look, we're right over that ridge. Be ready to have your kettle to move out at daybreak. I'll send a couple men over to help you. Good luck, Lige. Hope you find what you want. Thank you, Gil. Uh, what do you say we have a drink on that, huh? No, oh, come on, come on, come on. We're not on the drive yet. <laughs> there you are. For old time's sake, huh? Old time's sake. It's Trevor! It's Trevor! Welch is back with that new bunch. About time. Now, when you said Crowling's bunch was a draggle tail group, you weren't just being polite. Pasture cows always trouble the first day out. Well, as long as it's only the first day, we have got enough trouble without... Yeah, and less standing than... here ain't gonna solve any of our problems. Get out there and get them tacked on. Joe, you get up to point. Get them strung out. First the army, then horned elephants. I sure don't like the looks of those cattle. Well, we ain't passing out blue ribbons for the looks. We're driving them, not judging them. Well, I may be wrong, but you know what kind of cattle those are. Look, we're sure paid to cook, not judge cattle. Now, when I want your advice on the merits or demerits of the cattle, well, I'll come and ask you. Until then, get packed and get rolling. Wishbone, I never seen cattle like that before. Just hope you never see any more of them. They are called querencias. What's that mean? Pasture cattle. Don't like to be moved. Better word for them is trouble. The thing about querencias, the further away from home they get, the worse they get. 
Uh, you might say the same thing about Mr. Faber. We'd better get packed before he gets any worse. the boys down first day out now <laughs> but i sure couldn't do much driving with a foot like this now could i never heard of anybody kicking his herd to market <laughs> to keep these granite heads moving. Yeah, well, just don't go putting ideas in my heads. All right, it's just the first day. They'll be all right as soon as their trail broke. Well, I'm a drover, not a mule skinner. We're working like a pack of donkeys. There's his royal highness riding up ahead with a wishbone like he owned half the state of Texas. Yeah, well, his new boots gave him a blister. Yeah, well, his saddle's given me one. They wish, uh, how would you like to go part interest on my new ranch, huh? I, uh, I, I give you 25% for $100. But I'll do better than that. 50-50, how's that? What do you say, partner? No. Long day. Now, don't remind me. Oh, that's the craziest bunch of stock I ever worked in my life. It was like rounding up a bunch of bees. It's all in a day's work. We lost ground today means everybody up bright and early first thing in the morning. That just doesn't make sense. Why'd the boss do it? Just ain't like him to let something interfere with the drive. Yeah, that crowning sure turned out to be a dead weight. Why not? When he's got jackasses like us to do all of his work. Well, now that you mention it, Joe, there is sort of a resemblance. <laughs> Must be them ears, Joe. They do kind of stick out a little. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well then, good evening, boys. Good evening. <laughs> Mind if I join you? Looks like you already have. Put any better? <laughs> you asked me that in the morning. <laughs> a coffee, Mr. Crowning? Well, if you've got nothing stronger. <laughs> Crowning, maybe the boss didn't tell you, but he... Oh, now, now, now. I was only joking. Sure. <laughs> Don't worry. I know the rules. Oh, yeah. Maybe I never actually rode the trail myself. But I have sent thousands of cattle up north. Ooh, let me see. I had more than 50 hands working for me on my ranch at the same time. 100 at roundup time. What happened? How about that coffee, Mopey? His name's Mushy. <laughs> Don't mind me. You know, I was always terrible with names. I am just terrible. You know those 50 hands I was telling you about? I'd be lucky if I could remember 10 of their names. <laughs> I thank you. But you just ask Gil sometime. He'll tell you why. You know, it used to take a man all day long just to ride from one end of my ranch to the other. You still didn't tell us what happened. Well, now, that would uh, take more time to tell than you got to listen. Let's just say that I mismanaged my affairs. All right with me. Quiet down, you slab side of your head!
sleeping? I was just resting my eyes. That's what they call sleeping. How you doing? Well, I'm too numb to know. You're gonna take second guard tonight, Jim. Oh, who's that first? Him. I'll believe that when I see it. Keep your eyes open, and I'm gonna tell him right now. I'll do that. How they doing back here? Oh, so far, so good. They won't cause you any more trouble. Where were you last night? Flat on the back, slept through the whole thing. <laughs> I've been that way all my life. Yes, sir, once I'm asleep, I'm long gone. Oh, I got a way that might keep you awake. That's night hawking. You can have the first shift tonight. Hey, that suits me. I told Gil when I started out, I didn't want any special favors. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think your ramrod likes me. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Does he think I deliberately slept in last night? Never was much for mind reading. What do you think? I think we got some cows to punch. God! Yeah. They would I think they are? I would. Seems the lieutenant was right. One thing's for sure, they're not just sitting up there for the view. Yeah, looking's one thing. Taking something else again. Pass the word, I want a rifle in every boot. But no shooting, unless they ask for it. All right. That's as fine a seed animal as I've ever seen. Well, just forget it, Cronin. Boss said no maverick in there. I'll take it, Mr. Favor. You just take care of the drag. Gonna stop in? I told you no strings. I'm sorry. You're no, sorry. Okay, I, I won't do it again, Gil, I promise. My knee. I must have twisted it. Right, you stay here. I'll send Mushy back for you. What are you waiting for? You want to stay here and hold his hand? First Kyle is, and then Carinchy is, and now a cripple. Yeah. Who'd you say was going to take that first guard? Fine, Doctor. I'll be up and around in the morning. Mountain lion following us. Be rough on stragglers. Stragglers? 
You mean my cattle, don't you? You always was a good shot, Lige. But you might go after him as soon as the sun's up. Can't spare anybody else. Uh, you just leave that cat to me. I'll take care of him. And uh, don't make too wide a swing. I saw some guy with this morning. Mr. Crowning? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, uh... I'm feeling a little better. I think I'll be trying out this leg of mine pretty soon. Oh, glad to hear it, sir. Oh, now, look, you don't have to give me any of that sir business. I'm just one of the boys. You know, you must let this fancy outfit fool you. Matter of fact, it's the only suit of clothes I had left. And see these boots? These last pair of good boots I own. Oh, they're mighty nice. Mighty muddy, you mean. Hey, I, I, I was just thinking, if you got a minute, maybe you wouldn't mind uh, cleaning them up for me. I'd do it myself. I wouldn't ask you, except uh, that my head is just giving me fits. Well, I was supposed to help Mr. Wishbone clean up. I don't suppose he'd mind, though. Oh, it only take a minute. I won't forget you. Thank you, Mopey. My name ain't Mopey. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Mushy, I forgot. <laughs> no offense. No. Oh, I wonder if you'd uh, mind hand me those saddlebags, please. Thanks, Mopey. Mexicans are called Pancho. We have many other names. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, but I can never remember what they are. <laughs> no offense, of course, but they all sound like Pancho to me. <laughs> oh, nothing matter with Pancho, is there? Now, now you take my name, Lige. You ever hear of a stupider name in all your life? <laughs> <laughs> sit down, sit down. Maybe for a minute. You, uh, you play cards? Poker, blackjack. Well, what do you say we lay out a few hands, huh? Just to pass the time. Low stakes. Well, uh, all right, senor, uh, but uh, only for a few hands. Just to pass the time. <laughs> you know, win a dollar, lose a dollar. One more. Bastante. Oh, pay 20. Oh, blackjack again. Oh, that's too bad. I know how you feel. I've done plenty of losing myself. Mala suerte. Hey, hey, now, now, now. Don't be a sore loser. I am only angry at myself for playing. Huh? All right. Here you are. Take the money back. I don't want any hard feelings. I hope this don't happen every night. Put more men on them tomorrow night. I can't do that. I'm rotating the men every four hours the way it is now. I'm too tired to argue about it. Just do it. Boss. Yeah? The men need a rest. I've been thinking. Look, we've lost enough time as it is. We're moving out at daybreak. 
Anything else? Yeah. I just stopped thinking. over there by myself, you know. You get to talking to yourself. <laughs> what could have happened to anybody? You don't think I fell off that horse on purpose, do you? No, it's just the breaks of the game. That's the way things go. There are 20 men on a drive, and I had to be the one to fall and twist my knee. That's the way my luck's been going lately. Yeah. Look, I know it's just as hard for you fellas as it is for me, but I tell you what, I'll make it up to you. I'll work twice as hard just as soon as I'm able to be up and around on this knee. Well, I... I know I don't look it, maybe, but I can ride with the best of them. You ask Gil if I can't. Gil will tell you. Mr. Favor to you. Stay awake anyway. Oh, why? I really need road in a couple hours. Well, uh, this stuff will keep you awake. It won't do anything else. Ooh, did I tell you that is terrible? <laughs> it's just like pure alkali. Well, it wets down the dust. How'd you like something to wash down the dust, huh? Like what? Watch and wait, my friend. Watch and wait. elixir guaranteed to cut any dust anywhere anytime I'll drink coffee oh come on come on I'm just trying to be friendly that's the reason I brought this along in the first place I was gonna pass it around among all the boys all right all right if they are too good to drink with me that just means there is more for you and me oh come on <laughs> nobody will know Just don't sit there looking at it. <laughs> well, if you're not gonna drink it, give it to me. Well, maybe one won't hurt, huh? Nah, nah, of course not. <laughs> Just enough for one drink apiece. What do you say we kill a soldier, huh? You bet. Wait, 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 wait. Let's have a little toast. Why not? Why not? To Colorado and the founding of a new crowning ranch. Called oh, Colorado. No, 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 no. Colorado. All right, oh. <laughs> well, I got me one friend anyway, huh? 
anybody here, Quince, if you ever need a job or anything, you just let me know. Get in touch with me. I'll take care of you. If everything goes the way I expect it will in Denver, right? you just, just let me know. Remember, I was the first one to give Gil a job, Boston. Good Uh oh. Gotta get rid of this, huh? How in the world would you? Good night, amigo. <laughs> My boy, here is a tip for you. Oh, oh no, sir, that's all right. <laughs> Seems like that cat's getting awful close. <laughs> I got something that'll stop him. <laughs> this will stop him. Well, that's a mighty fine looking rifle. The best, the very best. It's a Henry repeater. Accurate, up to 100 yards. Of course, you have to be a real man to know how to handle these things. But I needn't tell you anything about that. A drover like you, why, you probably cut your teeth on a shooting iron, huh? Well, I do know what's in the hole. <laughs> Modesty, the mark of a true frontiersman. Do that. Ooh, that leg, that leg. You know, it's too bad about that cat. I was going to go and get him come to sun up. But with this leg, I don't. Oh, I sure hate to let Mr. Favor down. Well, mountain lions could be mighty dangerous around a herd. Yes, indeed. Uh, we, well, maybe I'll feel better in the morning. Oh, oh, Mopey, would you mind checking over this rifle for me? You know, I wouldn't want to have a misfire with only one leg under me. Well, certainly, Mr. Crumming. One leg. That's all right. I'll make it, Mopey. I'm the only one they got. Jim, come on, it's your trick. Jim, come on, wake up, it's your turn. Where'd you get it, Jim? Come on, where'd you get it? Yeah, me go, me go, partner, partner, partner. What are you doing up? Huh? I couldn't sleep. What are you about? Oh, no, I was just going to get uh, Scarlet to uh, replace me on the guard. Scarlet? Yeah. But Quince was leaving you. Oh, no. Well, see, Quince, he don't feel too good. And uh, I don't mind. No, Scarlet won't mind. There's no problem. No, hey, uh, no, Billy, there's no problem. I, I, I it, 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 no. Quince? Look, you're jumping to conclusions. Dead ground. 
I'll take his watch. You can't fire a man without hearing his side of it, especially Jim. When I say no drinking on the drive, that's what I mean. Well, it might not have been his fault. You don't know. Oh, yeah, sure. Somebody held a gun on him and forced the whiskey down his throat. Sure. Judging from smelling you, it's pure sour mash. Now, where is it? You know, it's against the rules to pack whiskey. At least that's what Gil told me. I asked you a question, Crowning. I don't want to ask you again. All right, all right. It's gone. It's all gone. So is Clint's gone. Oh, come on, Ramrod. Don't take everything so serious. All right. So maybe you did catch Jim a little drunk. What are you going to do, turn him into Gil? I don't have to. He already knows. Gil knows? That's right, he just got through firing Quince. He, he can't do that. He, not in the middle of a drive. You don't know your old friend, Gil. He just did it. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, you can start out by telling Gil where the whiskey came from. No, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Look, Yates, you gotta understand. Colorado. Colorado. That's all I got left. It's not right, Roddy. You gotta talk to him again. You can't do that. You know how the boss feels about the drinking on the job? Look at that, if it isn't the bluebird of the morning. All chirpy and chipper. I don't know sermons, just coffee. Like a little whiskey, huh? Oh, don't, Roddy. Thank you, Wish. Hey, where's Mushy? Beats me. I had to get him chop my own wood this morning. Can't depend on anybody anymore. Say it. Just don't say nothing. I've been up all night trying to get up enough guts to tell Gil. I just can't. There's nothing to tell. Uh, look, when we get to Denver, I'll make you a partner. 50-50, how's that? Why, in three or four years, you could buy and sell these cowpokes. Why don't you quit dreaming, Crowning? Colorado's no different than Texas, and men don't change. Only the scenery. But that cat, Gil. Right. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll settle it right away. It'll be ready to move out in 15 minutes. Thought well, I told you to fire Quince. I did. And what's he still doing here? He's riding with us till we cross the river. It's free range, ain't it? something to say, spit it out. You won't like it. Well, I'm still listening. Well, it's about Quince and your old friend Crowning. Didn't know you sent anybody out for that cat? I did, but he ain't gone yet. Are 
Is your rifle, Lige? I, I gave it to Mushy. Mushy? You mean that fool's up there all by himself? Let's go. I'm going with you. Give me that. I didn't tell him to go. What's he doing? Oh, fine. This head's too hard to crack. Just a few dents in it. Well, it's about time you came around. All right. What happened? I, I, I just don't know, Gil. Mr. Favor, it wasn't his fault. He didn't tell me. How much you didn't get the idea to be a big game hunter all by yourself? Let's have it. Yeah, maybe I didn't tell you, Mushy. But I gave you the rifle, and I gave you the idea. I, yeah, I, I may just as well have said it myself. I, I admit it, Gil, it was my fault. The same thing goes for Quince there, too. That whiskey, Gil, that, that was my whiskey, but I, I just meant it to be a friendly little nightcap. Oh, and what was you planning for Mushy? A friendly little funeral? Gil, I was wrong. I admit it, but it won't happen again. I mean it this time. But so do I. You're through. No, I promise, Gil. You promise? How many times you got to use a word before you wear it out? No, no more crowning. Uh, this time you stand or fall all on your own, no more having a fool like me to lean on. Gil, I didn't mean it that way. It's always been that way with you, ain't it? People are just there for you to take, to use, or to step on. Well, no more crowning. They're going to step back. Roddy, cut out his beef. Line him south. Quince, you're back on point. Rest you get on the herd. Just as well, huh? Bill always was a pretty good judge of his own men. Oh, and Rowdy, uh, never mind bunching my cows. They'll go on home all by themselves. Uh, how are you feeling now, Mr. Uh, just fine, Mr. Connie. Sure am sorry. Sorry. Uh, that's just a word. You remember what Gil said. Here, you keep this. You earned it. Good luck, Mushy. Same to you, Mr. Coney. Morning, Jesus. <laughs> hey, I got your name right that time, didn't I? You still mad at me about what happened last night? Senor, you can put your cards away. I have no more money. I cheated you, Jesus. I marked this deck. I guess that's the only way I can win at cards. When you lose as often as I do, you don't care how you win, just so long as you win. Here. No, go on, it's yours. Thank you, senor. Now, how about tightening up the sense on that horse, huh? Si, sí, senor.
Get back to the herd. Want me help? No. No, I'll take care of lives. For old time's sake. If I didn't know better, I'd say you're right. the slight misfortune to drop dead. <laughs> you gentlemen are looking for someone, perhaps? I assure you, I'm not the scoundrel you're looking for. May I own a palace with a million rooms and have a toothache in each and every one of them? I'm not Laszlo Skorny. In fact, I have a document here which will prove beyond doubt. Uh -huh. And now suddenly the boot is on the other foot. Uh, pardon me for being curious, mister, but what do you figure on doing with that thing? Simple. I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> not with that, you're not. Why not? Well, it's rusted tight, that's why. It is? If you're gonna go around shooting people, you gotta foil these things. Oh, please spare my life, spare my life. Look, I have money, much money. I can make you rich, both of you. Look, I have gold, a whole bag full of gold. Take it easy, mister. We don't want your life or your gold. We just heard the music and got curious. Just a pair of wandering music lovers, eh? What do you take me for, an infant? I know who sent you. Well, nobody sent us. My name's Gil Favor. This is Rowdy Yates. We got a herd of beef a couple miles back up the trail. Papa, we did see a herd last night. Hmm? Oh. Yeah. Want to preach? Why should you leave Would you by any chance say that they're on the run? That's one thing sure about gypsies. Usual are. Usual. <laughs> no. Delhi, Papa. Forgive our suspicion. Forgive a father who has only one precious jewel to protect. My daughter, Zia, the Excellency's favor, and Yates. 
call me Rowdy, ma'am. And I'm your servant, Laszlo's Gordy. <laughs> and now wine, my angel, wine. The best, the costliest wine for our friends and benefactors. Oh, wait a minute. Did you say benefactors? <laughs> the small matter of a new horse. Yeah, like I was about to say, come along with us and we'll sell your horse. Sell? Did you say sell? I'm a poor man. What about that bag of gold you're talking about? I was lying. I'm such a liar. Matter of fact, I got a good little mare I can let you have for ten dollars. Dollars? Are we going to haggle like merchants over dollars? <laughs> Look, I make you a gift, you make me a gift. That is the way of royalty. Ten dollars? Now, I have here a priceless amulet. It breaks my heart to part with it, but it's yours, you will have it. It once belonged to Catherine the Great, Empress of all the Russians. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. For a cattleman, you have all the instincts of an Armenian rug dealer. <laughs> Dear my pearl, our troubles are over. You can come along to the herd with us for the night anyway. Oh, thank you, thank you. You're a jewel. You're a jewel in the crown of this great nation. True. Roddy, you'd better put your horse in the traces. That fugitive from a gloop pot ain't gonna be able to drag that wagon anywhere. Stop. Four hands are better than two. To a happy journey. Are you mushy? You a little off your feed? Well, ain't that? Yeah, I just trying to trim down. Oh, come on, mushy. A growing boy needs his strength. <laughs> I look, mushy. Maybe you need to be hand fed. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Quint, I can manage. I can manage just fine, Mr. Quint. Look, Senor Fave and Senor Roddy. Well, now, them I know, but what's that driving them wagons? Might be I've been out here too long. I think it's a female. Yeah. <laughs> you need any help with the wagon, Rowdy? Mighty happy to take care of your friends. All right, break it off. That ain't. See if you can settle down, okay? Sorry, boys. <laughs> Just here to pick up a horse. And until they leave tomorrow morning, you stay on your own side of the fence. Clear? What in the ever loving is this? But he's going to sit there and eat that fine food he just finished cooking for us. Hmm? What is this? Tell him, Mushy. And then it's biscuits, Mr. Faber. Biscuits. But see, they're biscuits, sure enough. See that fine raw dough right there in the middle? tried, Mushy. Bless you, you tried. Maybe you'd better go wash your pots now, huh? Well, much obliged, Mr. Faber. Uh, Mr. Quince, Mr. Scarlet. Uh, I didn't know you cared whether I eat or not. Much obliged. How come Mushy's doing the cooking? Oh, we're just having a little fun with Wishbone. Yeah, I told him I found a horseshoe nail in that slum gullion he made last night. Well, he jerked his apron off, flung it at Mushy, and well, it just stomped off. You think maybe you're riding him a little bit hard? You know, he ain't 20 years old no more. Well, now, if he's too old for the job, maybe he hadn't ought to be out doing it. Yeah. Where'd he be? That's a good girl, Emily. You just stay there. I'll be through in a minute.
Louis, just what are you up to? If you absolutely got to know, Emily isn't laying like she ought. So you're feeding her so? I'm not feeding, I'm sprinkling. Don't you know anything about chickens at all? A laying hen in a ring of salt, an egg a day without a halt. Thought everybody knew that. I heard of it, but I always kind of suspicioned that it was uh, just a silly superstition. Are you calling me superstitious? Oh, Wish, all well, I Well, I'm can... not. All right, all right. Look, Wish, what's wrong? How many times I got to tell you, Emily isn't laying? I'm not talking about the chicken. I'm talking about you and the men. What about me and the men? Time was he looked up to you, respected you. What's happening? Well, I'm fed up, that's all. You try to do a little extra for him, and what do you get? There's too much salt, there's too much pepper, there's not enough pepper. You call that coffee, I thought it was something to take off tattoos with. Yeah, well, that's, that's just joking, Wish. Shows they like you. Shows they don't care, not one of them. Time was I used to get up two, three o'clock in the morning just to bake so they'd have nice bread instead of hardtack. Well, I'd sure hate to stand still till one of them said thanks. Well, I'd take root and flower like a green bay tree. Thanks, just a word, Wish. Well, I'm glad you told me. I thought it was a bird. <laughs> now look what you've done. Tisn't bad enough that you had to start this drive on a Friday when everybody knows that's the worst luck of all. Now you're gone and made me knock over the salt. Will you forget about the salt? We're talking. Now, it's hard enough pushing a drive without having trouble amongst the men, and I got no room for prima donnas. Prima donna? Would you like to break that down into American? Yeah. That is a cantankerous old snapping turtle who suddenly got it into his head that the whole world's against him. All right, all right. They'll get their three squares a day. But if you think I'm going to be Little Miss Sunshine for that bunch of saddle tramps, you got another thing coming. All right, I'll settle for three meals a day and try to get along with the men, will you? I'll do my best. You just do that, huh? Mr. Favor. Oh, Mr. Favor. What's that? That's what it looks like. Gypsy. A gypsy on the drive? Remember what you promised? All right, all right. What can I do for you, Mr. Zagorny? <laughs> Call me Laszlo. Look, the mayor, she's perfect for ten dollars. <laughs> Naturally, will accept my personal note. I hate to cut the answer short, but no. no. Oh, there's Wishbone, our cook. Ah, the cook. <laughs> you know Boryu Paprikas? Boryu who? Never heard of him. What outfits he worked for? <laughs> it's not a him. It's food for angels. Boryu Paprikas with Chipetke. Delicious. Now, I'm looking forward to many happy hours teaching you my, na teaching you my native dishes. <laughs> well, you can look forward to a ladle for a hat if I catch you near my truck wagon. I know you're kind. You'd steal a hot stove and come back for the smoke. Bore you, pish posh. No bore you paprika, sir. It's a tragedy. <laughs> So 
Hold on. 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 Hold on.
two mistakes in a row. It's rare, but it does happen. Don't be discouraged. We'll find the right card. Here, choose a card. Come on, choose a card. I'm choosing, I'm choosing. Don't rush me. I'm sorry, my friend. Three mistakes. Never. You mean... Oh, it's a good thing I'm not superstitious. I'm sorry, my friends. The fortune telling is finished. Now that I have danced for you, perhaps you will return the compliment. We can start with the story of your life. Yeah, well, that might not be too interesting. It sure be long. I don't suppose you could be mistaken about this. Wait. I see a picture. A lonesome grave in the prairie. There's a cross. The name of the cross is Wishbone. There are no mourners. No mourners? Nobody? Well, that just goes to show how wrong you are. I've been with some of these fellows for years. Mr. Favor and Rowdy and Jesus, Quint, Scarlet. Why, if I was to kick off, every one of them would be there. Every one. No one. Mr. Wishbone! Mr. Wishbone! You bring your duffel bag. What for? For that $20 gold piece in your boot. That's right. That's right. You said I'd find a $20 gold piece, didn't you? That was part of the fortune, wasn't it? Well, I'm just going to show you there isn't any $20 gold piece in my boot, and that'll mean the rest of your fortune is... I didn't believe in fortune, Tom. There's one way to escape your fate. Leave the herd. Leave the herd? Immediately. It's your one chance. The cards have spoken. Escape your fate and leave the herd? What's he mean, Mr. Wishbone? He's trying to give me hope, Mushy. Hope where there isn't any hope. What do you mean, Mr. Wishbone? I'm doomed, Mushy. I should have known it yesterday when I saw those three buzzards. Or when I spilled that salt. This just about nails the lid on it. I'm a goner, Mushy. Doomed. That's too bad. See, if you don't get to work and peel those potatoes, I'm going to take that knife and peel you. As a matter of fact, I may... Oh, Mushy, I'm sorry. I clean forgot what I was doing. Now, you just take your time with those potatoes. As a matter of fact, if you run into any trouble, well, after a while, old Wishbone will come and give you a hand. If I'm still here. Well, being doomed sure is good for you, Mr. Wishbone. Well, I haven't got much time left, Mushy. I got a lot of things I got to set right. I'm going to change. I've been a real ornery man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Why, I say. You don't need to agree with me, even if you do. Would you say that slower, Mr. Wishbone? Well, never mind. You'd think a man with one foot in the grave could get a little bit more... Hey, you're coming, aren't you? Where, Mr. Wishbone? Well, the funeral. What funeral? My funeral, you chowderhead! Oh, sure, I, I forgot, Mr. Wishbone. Well, you don't look sick to me, Mr. Wishbone. Well, I am. I am so. I'm real sick. I'm... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What's the trouble, Mr. Wishbone? I got a twinge right here. It's a, it's a real burning sensation. Oh, Mushy, this is it. You tell the boys. That was a close one. Oh, Mr. Favor. Uh, could I have a minute, please? Look, oh, Wishbone, I'm getting fed up with your belly aching. Well, that, Mr. Favor, I just wanted to offer you a, a donut. Go ahead, they're fresh. Here, take take two. Got up real early this morning and baked them myself. And it just isn't anything too good for my boys. You boys? But you give them up cooking. Well, now, whatever give you an idea like that? I just feel hints like screaming I quit at the top of your lungs. What? You just look at here. Now, come right over here and look. There's cornmeal mush. There's scrambled eggs. There's fried potatoes, a nice baked ham, grits and gravy, flapjacks, donuts. Does that look like I'll quit? I don't know what's happening, do you wish? It should have happened a long time ago. You could have gone all day without saying that. Well, how come you didn't tell Mr. Favor, Mr. Wishbone, about you being doomed and all? Well, I'll tell them tonight, after chow. Don't you forget, you're the only one I'm sure of. You're already promised. Well, promise what, Mr. Wishbone? Don't you ever remember anything? You promised to come to my funeral. Oh, sure, Mr. Wishbone. I wouldn't miss that for the world. Mr. Faber! Mr. Faber! What is it? Not it. Them. There's 20 riders coming in here, and they're all toting rifles. Round up the rest of the men. Yes. Fear, comrades. Lazlos Gordon is with you now. In combat, I'm a lion, tiger, dragon. Frankly, I terrify myself. I feel better already. On second thought, I. I think I'd better guard the rear so they won't surprise us. Surprise, Gypsy! Honey, you got something to say? You speak right up. Somebody buy you a ticket? You tell me what for, I might find you an answer. Who are you? What do you want? I just come after what's mine. Bought and paid for. He's lying. He's lying. In writing, Gypsy. $500 right on the barrel head. Poultice, he said. Balm for a poor father's grief. And when I was getting the ring and the marriage paper, they were getting out of town. Said they had to get permission from the head Gypsy. You want to know what kind of a fool I am? I actually waited for them to come back. Hmm. Uh, is that right? Look, I see as a woman. She changed her mind. This is a matter of life and death. Oh, look, you made a deal and I'm holding you to it. You know how I feel and still you want to marry me. <laughs> a 
deal is a deal. Papa, give him back his money. Gladly. I'll throw it in his face. Except for one little thing. It's gone. What? I lost it in the game of chance. They called it poker. Papa! All right, shoot me, shoot me. I'd love to. But I didn't come here for play acting. Or my $500. me. <laughs> Let go. That might be a real good idea, friend. Oh, look. I come here as a reasonable man. All I want is my due. I was cheated by that gypsy. That I don't doubt. Well, are you going to hand her over? I'm afraid not. You just admitted I was took. Well, what are you going to stand in my way for? I don't rightly see how I can uh, give away people. Sort of old-fashioned that way. Figure a man's cheated, he goes to the law, and I don't see no badges. Well, she's mine. And I got the paper to prove it. A receipt for $500 signed by her father. What about that? I have nothing to say to you. You've got nothing to say? Look, I admit that I don't know much about women. And the older I get, the less I seem to know. But how can you stand there and look at me and tell me you've got nothing to say? Ain't there a right and wrong no more? And don't it apply to women? I don't know where you've been for the last 20 years. Uh, but people don't sell people anymore. Not even gypsies. Gypsies? What do I care about gypsies or anything else? Listen, I saw you perched on top of that crazy looking wagon coming down the street that day in Heber. And I said to myself, Sam, you're looking at the girl you're gonna marry. That's the way I felt. That's the way I feel. And that's the way I'm gonna keep feeling. I came here hoping she'd be reasonable, or you would. But if we're gonna have a fight, we'll have it. And if we have it, I'll win. Are you sure about that? I'm sure of this. I'll win or I'll get killed. And I take a lot of killing. You know, you could save everybody a lot of trouble right now. Ah, uh, you're doing it again. <laughs> Find no more. Get out of here now. All right. The talk's over. Now comes the trouble. And you just bought yourself a hatful. <laughs> Get your herd through San Saba Pass? Not if I have to put a fence across it. Fences can be cut down. Well, so can men. Put one hand on my fence and you'll see. Your fence? You think you can fence off a trail? I can this one. Or maybe you didn't catch my name. Sam Llewellyn. Don't mean a thing to me. Well, it ought to. You've been crossing my land for the past week. <laughs> Boys, well, just talk. Let's try and keep it that way. No blasting the shadows. Llewellyn's dealt the hand. It'll be up to him to call it. You too. Stick close to Mushy and Wishbone. We'll take care of Llewellyn. Oh, please. Mr. Favor, you're a prince among men, a defender of the oppressed. You have my lifelong gratitude. No thanks do. As soon as we get to San Saba, it'll be you and the sheriff. The sheriff? Why? Well, he can protect you, he can prosecute you for fraud, or both, as long as you're out of my hair. Now, let's get some of that chow before we move out. I am sorry about what happened. I hope you are not hurt. I suppose I can survive with a certain amount of pampering. Is that thing pretty good, doesn't he? Ah, all the old gypsies do. And the new ones don't? Some of us. I don't know. Papa says we are not proper gypsies. One, my cousin Christy. She lives in a house. Think of that. <laughs> to you, this means nothing. 
You like living with a constellation for a ceiling. And you don't? What woman does? Hey, I always thought women got along real good with starlight moonbeams. Violin playing. A romance, yes. A living, no. Wheels were made for rolling, not for building a future. Or a family, huh? Or a family. We'll move up on ahead of them. What about the fence? I don't think we'll need it. We'll hit them tonight, late. If that don't help, we'll drive that herd back down their throat tomorrow. Keep that cookie, Rowdy, and enjoy it. But don't spoil your supper, because it's going to be a good one. Abide with me. I swear. What are you eating there, Rowdy? Cookies. Wishbone baked them. Baked? Something sure got into that old coot. Well, what did you see, chow? Ribs of beef, sweet corn, mashed potatoes, biscuits, everything. How about that beef tonight, that hot meal for noon, and that breakfast this morning? I don't know. Maybe he's seen the light and heard the horn. Yeah, you unsaddled my horse today. He said I looked tired. <laughs> Maybe his fortune has him worried. Huh? Well, he ought to be worried. I hope I never see that death card come up three times in a row. Ah, uh, what's the matter with you, Senor Jim? The black ace? That was only a joke. There ain't nothing funny about that black ace. But that's only a trick. I've seen it done many times. A trick? Mm -hmm. Wishbone sure don't think so. So you don't think he's got the notion he's cashing in, do you? Well, seems kind of strange. You know, I was, I was over there. He was, uh, he was teaching Mushy the words to abide with me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Charlie's going to pick up around here. Uh, wait a minute. We can't, can't go around letting the old boy think he's going to die. We've got to tell him about it. Well, it'd be a shame to spoil that good mood. Before Chow, anyway. Yeah. That's a good idea, Al. Okay, we'll tell him after it, Chow. <laughs> <laughs> How about another beef rib, Quince? Scarlet? Oh, I'm busting, Wish. Mr. Favor, anything more for you? I'm up to here. Hey, plenty of everything, Rowdy. Go need another bite, Wish. Thank you. You fellas? Not for a condemned man. Wish your cook's a mean last meal. Hmm? What do you mean? Didn't you hear about him? Gypsy told him a fake fortune. He thinks he's a goner. What kind of a joke is that? Well, we're going to tell him about that for Chow. There you are. Plenty here. Now, anybody else, anything at all. There's plenty of biscuits and lots of that good red gravy for sopping. It's after Chow right now. Wish? Did you change your mind, Mr. Favor? Oh. Thanks, I'm full. It's beautiful, but I'm full up. Uh, look, Wish, there's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, well, first, Mr. Favor, there's something I'd like to say to everybody. I don't want this to be a shock to anybody, but your old friend Wishbone isn't going to be with you much longer. So I wrote up this will this afternoon. There, Jim, don't cry. It isn't as bad as all that. <laughs> Those of you that haven't guessed, I'm a goner. Pearly gates are opening wide. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute, you don't understand. I'm cashing in. <laughs> That's funny. Wish 
Grace, you're, you're not gonna die. It's, it's just a joke. A bad joke, maybe, but you're not gonna die. No. Tell him. <laughs> it was a joke. Harmless joke. And you all just let me go ahead and make a fool of myself. Uh, hold on. Which one? Leave him be. Listen to this. My last will and testament. I ain't got much. About the best thing's a $20 gold piece. That's for Mushy. Might be it'll buy him a little schooling. As for the drive share is concerned, that's for a good time for all of you at the end of the drive. And don't sit around feeling bad about old Wish. Had a good life and some good friends. Man can't ask for much more. I'd like Scarlet to have my new boots. And Quince, you take my pipe. You had your eye on it long enough. Toothless, I want you to have those trained dice of mine. The only way you'll stay ahead of the game. But the rest of my gear ain't much. If anybody would like to have a keepsake, I'd be proud if you'd help yourself. That's about it. But I'd like to say this. I believe in God. And if he's better to me than an ordinary old man deserves, I'll be someplace watching out for you. All of you. Always your friend, Wishbone. Siento, Senor Favor. I would have stopped him, but I did not know. Well, which way did he go? Quien sabe, I paid no attention. Shall I saddle your horses? Oh, now his head started, he could have gone anywhere. Oh, I'm sure he will come back, senores. Well, he'll come back. He's got nowhere else to go. Mr. Favor! Yeah, what is it? A letter coming in from the north. See, I told you he'd come back. Wishbones. Where'd you get it? He was heading toward Heber when we picked him up. Anything's happened to him, anything at all. He's all right. There's no reason he shouldn't stay that way. Provided one thing. What's that? Well, Sam says, and I want to make sure you get this right. Sam says you've got exactly one hour to come up with the woman and the $500. If you don't, you can start looking for a new cook. Were well, you talking about killer? Say it like a prayer, cowboy. Say it and believe it. One hour, and when you come, come nice. Understand? Understand. Yeah, yeah, we understand. All right, take it easy. You all get a chance to talk, but one at a time. Scarlet? The man's got wishbone. I don't see there's anything to talk about. Let's go get him back. Yeah, yeah. I would just go. Swell. That's a great way to get wishbone knocked off right now. Well, Mr. Favor's right. They'd kill him, sure. Well, if that's so, we got no choice at all. We got to do what they say. A live girl against a dead man? I say she goes, and the money, too. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not possible. In the first place, I haven't got the money. I swear it on my honor. What honor? No. He's telling the truth. I looked in the wagon. There is no money. See? <laughs> Wait a minute. You, you've got $500, don't you? Yeah, There's a little over $500 in trail expense money. I got $60 owed me on this drive, and I just quit. That goes in the pot. Double it. I'm right, in. Anyone else for drawing their yeah. time? Oh, yeah. All right, relax. Nobody's got to draw their time. You got the $500. Cowards. Cowards. What about my daughter? Are you willing to turn her over to that monster? Where's your sense of shame? Where's your manhood? We must fight, attack, charge, show them no mercy. Yeah, and get Wishbone killed? You can't make an omelet without breaking a few little eggs. Now, men, listen to me, all of you. You all have daughters, mothers, sisters. It is your sacred heritage to protect womanhood. 
Now, you have men, you have horses, you have guns. All you need is a leader. And I, as the world's foremost... Papa! Shut up. You are the world's foremost windbag. And you know it. My own daughter talks to me like that. What have I raised? A monster, an animal, a turnip without a heart. Papa, stop it. I can be ready in five minutes. You're not going to sell yourself to that beast. You are the one who sold me, Papa. I am just living up to your bargain. <laughs> They finally coughed up, huh? Well, the crew chipped in. Well, is it all there? Yep. All 500? Yep. Well, what was that for? For trying to buy me in the first place. If you want a woman, you ask the woman. Now, I am ready to keep the bargain. We'll take the wagon. It's a long way back to Heber. My little girl, I'm going to miss you. Papa, you get in the back. Sam will drive. Oh, my Pearl, my angel. <laughs> Are we taking him? He is my father, and he's your father-in-law. And don't you forget it. <laughs> Besides, he's a good cook. <laughs> Any other comments? And take that cigar out of your mouth. Hmm. It's too hard to clean. Now, that's better. Please, your arm. Yes, dear. Uh... Come on, move along, move along. Got to get this line moving today. Look at him. It's just like yesterday never happened. Which bones will, the men shelling out the 500. No one's even mentioned that. Ain't no need to. Well, come on, what are you doing, dreaming? Well, you know, he finally broke down and made some fresh bread. Well, it's about time. Oh, very funny. Come on, move on. Act like a bunch of old ladies.